And we are live. Am I hosting this? I don't care. <laughs> all right, guys. No, 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 this is all, it's here's, all casual. Here's what we do, guys. We're going to have a, a casual discussion for those of you who uh, who are uh, interested in this. So this is the first time Sergio has met Rolo. Obviously, I've been on both shows. I, Rolo and I do a show together. Wow. And I go to, I'm from Dallas, so I see Sergio all the time. So I'm going to moderate this when they start throwing lobs at each other and then hopefully keep them from fighting. Yes. So, so that's that's the thing here. I've given Wait, I've been given a douche nozzle. I've been, there you go. Nice. I've been given a list of uh, topics that we're going to discuss while we're doing this. And I'm probably going to read some things off the different chats. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this now. So the first thing that we want to talk about, oh, actually, Sergio, this is, this is what I want to know. Like, hey, can we get, make sure the audio is good? So can if you guys well, yeah. hit a one in the chat? Yeah, yeah hit a one in the chat if you guys can hear it's okay. So You're good. here's here's the thing. Also, we can just like listen to it on here. Let me see if I can turn right. it on. Let me turn it up real quick, see if I can hear it. Um, um, El Chris. So so the, the thing is, yeah, it doesn't look like audio I'm, I'm is live. Ass. Audio is ass. Oh, you can't hear us? Maybe it's coming from uh, the camera mics or echo. Oh, take off echo cancellation. Oh, that's right. On mine. Yeah. Maybe it's coming from uh, the camera mics. There we go. So yeah, we do have a little echo. I think. I I using. Uh, okay, you got it. Okay. All right, beautiful. So here's here's. Oh no, it's wrong mics. It might like he said wrong mic. It might be camera mics. Go to the settings again. It should not be. Well, I would just check it really. Yeah, it's definitely not using the. Yeah, it's defaulting yeah. to the microphone. Yeah. Wait, wait. Sometimes it just shows 150 with those. How about that? All right, how about now? Even worse, actually. One, two, one, two. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, we are getting this. It's the Zoom point. Hey guys, I think that did it. Yep, that did it. All right, guys, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're good. All right, guys, sorry about that. Um, all right, you guys should be able to hear me fine. Beautiful. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with this. Thank you guys for giving us some uh, audio input there. Uh, so here's the first thing, Sergio, my question to you has, uh, and I guess to you also is like, I don't, when I talk to the two of you, I don't really see any dissension, but apparently, you know, you've had an issue with some of the things he said, and I've just been Everybody confused. Does. I've been confused by like what exactly the issue is. So could yeah, you describe? I'm definitely a thousand percent agree on way more than we disagree on. Like I'm definitely um, preaching for like the things that like the little tiny um, things that were, were differences in, but I would say that for 90% of stuff, I would actually say you're my biggest by far on my show. Everything that I say is literally a quote from you, maybe changed a little bit or used just a little bit, just a little bit. Otherwise, like, uh, I would say I agree with you on damn near everything. It's just these little things that I'm a little bit uh, disagreeing with. I just want to see your opinion on because I've read, I read your book. I didn't read all of them. I just was able to read the first one. Um, but um, I've read, uh, you know, um, uh, Evolutionary Desire. I read Mark Higginson's book. Um, I read uh, um, God's Side. Like, I was trying to Try to see where you're coming from. I learned a lot. Got thought actually well, like they're having trouble. trouble. We're still having trouble with the audio. He's mm -hmm. the only live mic right now. Who is? Mike, me. The only live mic right now. So it worked for a second, depending on one of the things. No, it it only worked for me. You want to test these ones? Are you still hearing them? Yeah, they can only hear me. And I'm mic five, by the way. Yeah, can you hear mic five? Hello, 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 mic. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, they can only hear me. One, two, hello, one, two. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, his, well, his mic's live. All right. How about now? Hello, 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 hello. Go ahead. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, me, hello. Hello. One, two, yeah, see, I still don't hear it. Yeah. Nothing? There's nothing. Sergio, still no audio. Uh, how about now, Sergio? Hello, 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 hello. Uh, test one, two, mic test one, two. Mic 
Check, check, check. So it looks like I'm number two. Mike is number two. Okay, so who's coming through? Is everyone stable from the front row? Can you just give me a shout right now? Check, check, check. Check, check, check again, please. So it looks like I'm number two. Mike, check one, two, testing one, two. Mike, check one, two, testing one, two. Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Are you? No. You guys do not have audio. Yeah, the, the only, guys, there's a solution here. There's only one solution, and we put the one mic in the middle, and we just talk into it. All right, cool. Can you just put the camera on me and I'm going to talk to everybody while we wait for you guys to fix this up. This is not going to be great audio. 
Just yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. We'd actually be better off using the inboard the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, yeah, yeah, the camera mics are even better. Like, the switching the settings yeah. until which one sounds the best yeah. might be the best way to do it. Which is, I can hear now. Okay, but very low. No, it won't matter. I, they're just going to hear me three it's, times yeah, louder than them. Directional, it's directional. That's why. Yeah. Oh, you know what you could do? You could use that shotgun mic. Yeah, but then I gotta turn it through here. Oh. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, this is good enough. It's good enough. Ready? Let's go. Good. Ready, guys? We're All gonna right. go ahead and start this thing up, okay? Enough. All right. Yeah, just turn it up. All right. If, if, you, if it's just unbearable, then let us know. We're just gonna talk loud. All right. We're gonna share one mic. You see yeah. the mic right there in the middle because we're in an OnlyFans studio. <laughs> here we go. So go ahead, Sergio. What are the things Sorry, that you're yeah, So here we go, guys. The thing is, I have done shows with both of them. Mm -hmm. I've done maybe four shows with him and 50 shows with him. And uh, I don't know what the, the disagreement is. So could you go? I know you said the majority of your influence comes from Rolo. Could you go over what your disagreements are? Like, why, why is it that, you know, you guys get uh, throw, throw shade in the yeah. chat? Yeah. So it, it why are we here? Yeah. So it almost always comes down to just uh, just a difference in opinion based off of my own life experiences, which obviously you've studied everything. to. You're, you're, it's not your life experience. It's based off of science. It's based off yeah. of the books that you've read. You've put it all together and probably some social ex or your, your own personal experience, too, you know. Um, so just a lot, but like uh, to understand me a little bit more, um, I was the type where I had my first business when I was 21. Um, I was, I got kicked out of my house at 18. A lot of where I got to where I got today was because of nothing but myself. I didn't have family helping me. It was a lot of me on my own um, with girls, with everything. I've had multiple serious relationships with multiple very beautiful women, um, you know, living with them, all that type of stuff. And so my experiences just show me that some of the things that like you say, just don't always align. Just like how when Michael and you first started talking, um, he kind of, I don't know if he changed your mind on pre-selection, but he probably might have been like, you know, look at this, you know, look what I'm able mm -hmm. to do with this pre-selection and like uh, see how you can be friends with women and just certain men can be able to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes back to like those things, but just a wide range of like six or seven different things. There's some topics I've just never heard you. I've watched every single show that you do. There's not one thing that I miss. I watch all Rue Zeros. So I'd like to think I know everything about you. So these questions are things that I have not learned about you yet. Yeah. Um, and uh, But for the most part, like I said before. I'll see if I can educate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the most part, like I said, I agree with you on 90% of things. Like literally, I would not have a show if it wasn't for you. Everything that I teach, everything that I do, I wouldn't be able to do without you. So at the end of the day, you know, it's not that much of a difference. It's, it's very minuscule. Hey, turn, the, turn the gain on the mic all the way up. Yeah, I have it all the way up. Okay, okay yeah, they're still saying it's not loud enough. I'll talk from my diaphragm more, guys. My mm -hmm. bad. Say it with your chest. Yeah, I'll say it with my chest. Sorry, y'all. Mm -hmm. But no, uh, to, just to start off, like the first thing is obviously the biggest thing that I do on my show is I teach mm -hmm. women. Um, I have a feeling that uh, a lot of people in the red pill space like to gatekeep uh, red pill from women. So I want to know what your opinion was on the gatekeeping of red pill to just men. And if you think that red pill is good for men and women. Yeah. Well, I've already said this i've been on several podcasts and i've actually written essays on this is that they've written like the people have asked me this i get this from like a lot of people who are part of like say robert kiyosaki's crew and then and so the women who have a problem with me they're usually coming at me from a position of ignorance but the first thing that they ask me is how come you don't have a rational female yeah. how come you don't have the female equivalent of the red pill how come you don't have the pink pill how come you don't have something like that and my answer is always the same is it's you read the rational male you, you will learn more about human nature you'll learn more about your own nature and the problem is is that when you are explaining unflattering truths to women when it comes to objective empirical stats when you're relating that to women women don't want to hear that it doesn't taste good so the primarily when we talk about how women tend to be like I hate this this right now because people will say that women are more emotional than men or men are more or like more rational than women well the fact of the matter is is that it's not a it's not a 50-50 uh, thing it's not a blank slate so women tend to prioritize emotion before they prioritize reason men are tend to prioritize reason before they prioritize emotion now people will say, well, I know some guy and he's such a pussy and I know some guy and he just flies off the handle and he's emotional. He gets angry and he gets crazy or whatever. I can't believe the rational male, pff, like that's what they'll say, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then the, the, when I'm having, in the midst of the, those conversations, I have to say, look, you're still subscribing to something like a blank slate ideolo or ideology. About blank, well, really, it is an ideology, but you're a mentality of the blank slate. And so when people say, Rolo, where, how come you don't do anything for women? How come, you, how come the red pill's not for women? How come uh, the rational, it's not the rational female? Because if you, write, if you write the rational male, therefore you are required by law, you are obligated to balance things out in the force and call, you know, do, do your next book, the rational female. And you know what? If I was out for a lot of money, I probably would have done that by now because so many people have asked me for that. Mm -hmm. But what happens is when you put women into the mix, whenever you bring women into the red pill, and trust me, I've been doing this for 20 some odd years in every single instance, women are on board with it. They love it so long as it's a sandbox that they can play in. It's like gamer girls. When gamer girls want to go into the game stores, they want to go and play these games. Like, hey, can girls play too? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the question isn't about whether they can play or not. It's like, am I, why am I obligated? as a guy to balance things out for women. I, I get this all the time when, when I'm on Access Vegas or I'm doing a, a crush and fit or I'm doing something else, is it's always what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So if you go and you say something that is an unflattering truth about women, you have to, for what, you know, in a gynocentric social order, you have to explain something that is bad for men too. So if it's bad for women, well, Ooh, ooh, men do it too, and they're worse. And let me tell you why. And how come you don't? How come you don't talk about that? And the reason why I don't get into female issues specifically is because I am talking about one sex at that time. I am not trying to balance the force. Mm. I'm not trying to, you know, say, well, it's okay. We're all going to go away from this uh, conversation, and we're going to have a good taste in our mouth at the end of it. Because when you deliver information of any kind, not even just this, any kind. You have to tell people how to feel about it because if you don't tell them how to feel about it, they will insert their own feelings into that. So what happens is you get these women who will come into the red pill space or they'll want the rational female or something. And then after a while, they start to sanitize it. They water it down. They sugar it up. They try to... You're talking about the speakers. More or less. Yeah. But the... Not the, the women that are based women, like normal women. Well, what's a normal woman? That's the other question. It's like, I get that. Well, quite. I just mean NPCs, yeah. just like all the, the normal, like, like, obviously, like we'll say Pearl, you know, um, you know, is somebody that, you know, uh, talks about this stuff, mm -hmm. but she's an influencer. But like, I'm saying like normal women. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, because I agree with you. Like the way I see it is there's a, there's a huge issue with, with um, just words today. Like we have the manosphere but we don't talk a femosphere where i think that there's a manosphere i've and actually a used that term before oh, yeah. <laughs> well, so, but, uh, I, I just don't hear it a lot though and like in the thing like i would say pearl is a part of the femosphere she doesn't she has said multiple times pearl on is part of the hackosphere is what she uh, yeah but well, like well the thing is she's trying to give women advice now so i say anybody that's trying to give men advice is in the manosphere anybody that's trying to give women advice is in the femosphere but, see, but she's but, also entertainment but you see, which pearl is, completely is different. not just trying to give women advice she's trying to uh, pretend that she is an authority Authority on things that she is in, in no way ever going to be an authority on and is trying to really I mean hell I just saw her twice on uh, on Pierce Morgan and they list her as the female Andrew Tate who's it who is she giving advice to if that's well, how they're I, I don't I don't see her as an authority like I still see her though as an intent she says all the time I'm an entertainer and I yeah. believe that she is an entertainer like that's full entertainment yeah. but she started the women thing she started the wifey thing the wife school and that's because she wants to help She's women I, uh, from what I know, she is. But is there like, are there classes? Are there yeah, actually people this? getting together? Are yeah, they yeah, actually so, so, doing something? So she's not teaching people how to cook. She has a woman who's a cook, who's a really good cook, who's a mm -hmm. wife. Teach the class on how to cook. Great, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, cool. So, so but, but that's the most It's called outsourcing, is what it is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. awesome. Yeah, but like, but uh, the biggest thing is I, I just want to take away from it though is that she like, got some cheap labor from Nigeria. To help her. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, I'm sorry, we did. We just got canceled off the show. Out of, out of, no, but, but the Nigerian food. The biggest thing though is just like red pill is this. And then manosphere is this, and and and, um, and the femosphere is this. And to me, red pill because it's just the truth. Because red pill is just the re the truth of reality. Mm -hmm. That should be for men. Like, can it not be for men and women? Can we not? Now, don't get me wrong. We have complete. I teach this on my show all the time. We have two completely different dating strategies. Mm -hmm. But why can't they learn the red pill also? They do. And, and, they yeah. should. Well, and so like, Fine. but buy my book, read it, so, learn it. So I, why do I have to make a specific product? To cater to women, if I don't my, want you if, to, I don't want if, you to. I'm do not that. saying that, but but if my obligation is to objective truth and empirical data, if if that's the way it is, and I'm, I'm God knows I've written, you know, well, hell, the fourth book, you know, I, the blank slate, 
if I'm going to say the blank slate is bullshit, if I'm going to say the uh, the ghost in the machine is bullshit, if I'm going to say the naturalistic fallacy is bullshit, and then I'm still expected to play along with people who are who subscribe to those mentalities by writing a book to cater to them, really, what does that make me? Does that make me a hack? Does that make me somebody who's pandering to their? I don't think you need to write a book. I think I think. You, what what you may be saying is that there is this different reality from a female's point of view, and he's saying there isn't. It's just one reality. Well, this is so well yeah, I, no, no, I'm, it is one reality. And what I'm saying is they can. But what I what I think is in red pill, the men can benefit a lot from red pill knowledge. The reason sure. why we teach men red pill is because their life can get better. And all I'm simply saying is, if I teach women red pill, their mm -hmm. life can get better too. So now we understand I, on a general basis they're more emotional, so they're not going to accept it. I understand my percentage of women that actually take it in is going to be very low. We're talking maybe five to ten percent but I don't care about those numbers just like how on fresh and fit there's still a ton of incels there's still a ton of losers dorks that watch that fucking show if they have 20,000 people watching there might be 70 50 to 75 percent that are fucking losers and only some of them are getting their life good going to the gym making money doing all that type of shit so I don't think I'm gonna ch change every woman just like how fresh and fit's not gonna change every man but it's the whole point of just trying to change a woman or just trying to teach them red pill and I get shamed for this like crazy and I know why because if girls listen to what I say and I tell them to you know keep their legs closed and shit that's gonna make it to where these guys that watch all the red pill shit will get even less pussy than they're already getting if they're incel mm -hmm. so I understand why they all fucking hate me I understand why all red pill guys fucking hate me and because if women learn these facts too they, they fucks it fucks the game up just like how a guy learning game in red pill he's able to take advantage of certain women if he feels like it, if he so chose mm -hmm. to use the tool belt like that mm -hmm. and the women they're scared of women being able to do this and like even a long time ago you said uh, like you you're on your stream, you're like, I, I, I like what Sergio is doing. He's undervalued, mm -hmm. or, or you said something along those terms. And it's just like, I want to know, you know, like you go on a lot of shows, you know, to like help the men, you know, help men, help men. Go on Fresh and Fit because that's going to help blow them up. Go on Saucecast, that's going to help blow them up and help men. Go on whatever, that's going to help blow them up and help men at the end of the day. I want you to come on my show because I want you to help me help women. And I see that like your words and everything in your book, everything Dr. David Buss, all these other people talk about, Marty Hazelton, these women need to hear this thing. Like I need to tell these women, go read Marty Hazelton's book so you can understand your hormones. Like there's nothing wrong with somebody pushing this, but I get tons of shame for it. And I'm not saying that it's you, I'm not saying it's Michael, well, on, but what, it's the whole community what, what that what we you, represent. You mean shame for trying to teach women? Yes, a lot of people do not want, I, I, want so, a guy so, teaching women so, this stuff. So the thing is, I, I don't think it's, it maybe it's not shame for trying to teach women, it's almost like trying to teach like, well, I was about to say something, get me in fucking deep trouble. <laughs> uh, try, you, you're trying to program, you know, you're trying to, pro, like, it's, it, they don't accept the programming language. Like uh, you're trying to put one kind of programming language into a machine that doesn't accept the programming language. So but what sense. if ten percent accept it? Because I just don't. Like, if 10, I understand it's not if, profitable. If 10%, if 10%, I understand it's not. It's if, not 10%, profitable. if ten percent accept it, then the, the issue would be this: Fresh and Fit would have a reunion show every six months of all the girls who've changed their lives. Well, that, they don't care about. The, it's all about how you say the things. Like it's all about how you say it. And if I can say it to where I have a way better percentage return, uh, because I've watched their show and I know they're girls that really love the show and go on there all the time. Some of them have cried. Fucking shout out to Zena. Like some girls have literally gone on that show and like been like, y'all really changed my yeah, life. Have another like, meltdown. Yeah. That's some great content, Zena. But, but, but like the thing is, like basically when I saw that, I was like, man, that is an example of exactly all that I do. Everything that I do is to try to do what happened to Zena and try to help them. And, like, I, and the reason why I do all this, Rolo, is because at the end of the day, we're trying to help men. And if we help women, it also helps men too. Right, let me, let me, let me touch on a couple of points that you said here. So one is you want to help women. First thing is you have to understand that, at least in my, my wheelhouse, my direct mission is not to help men. It is to help men with the tools so that they can make themselves better men, okay? So what I do and whenever I do this, I know I get myself into a lot of trouble for saying this, but when I, and I start the introductions of my books all the time, I'm not in the business of helping men become better men. I'm in the business of equipping men so that they can become better men or use those tools however they see fit, okay? That's why people hate me so much because I don't give them prescriptions. I don't give them 12 rules for life. I don't give them some easy to follow step-by-step -step guide to go from being a, a shit-stained zero to a, you know, a, an alpha chat at a 10, right? I don't do that because that's disingenuous. 
So if anybody is selling you on some sort of template for a successful life, tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah, and I, and I've, I've heard you say this a hundred times, so man. So that's number one. Number two is this, is that in telling people objective facts and objective data, just by doing that, people think that because you're saying the, thing, the things that you are, that you're trying to convince them to be something, to do something. You cannot go, I'm just doing this show right now, everyone will say, you're an influencer, you have a responsibility, you should be telling these guys the things that fit into my ideological uh, you know, post office box here, because if you're not, then you're part of the enemy. Now we go from being objective truth, to being moralistic truth, to being uh, to ideological, to being philosophical, and that's that's why every time I correct these sons of bitches when they say, well, the red pill philosophy is X, the red pill um, you know, ideology is this. These guys believe this. Mm -hmm. And every time I hear that on any show that I'm on, I stop them dead in their tracks. I go, let's just stop right now because the only way that people who have a believer's mindset can interpret data is through the filter of their beliefs. Mm -hmm. So remember what I said about how you can't tell people just straight up raw data without telling them how to feel about that data? Mm -hmm. These are people who are going to say that you're telling me this raw data, you're giving me these, these facts, this empirical you know, knowledge, because you want me to think in a certain way. You want me to behave in a certain way. You want to tell me, like, just by presenting that information, that is now an emotional appeal to them because they don't know how else to interpret it. Mm -hmm. So that's the way it works. Oh, so, um, but, so, like, oh, wow. That's there's, a, there's, a fresh, there's a fresh one on the, yeah. on the wall. Uh, but, no, so there's... Like the prescription, or like we always talk about, so, like the well, 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 before. But let me let me finish this yeah, real yeah. quickly here. So you also said something else, and it, maybe you'll. This is what you're going to get to. When you're saying I want to help women, okay, you're what that is is that's giving them a prescription. If it's based on you know the stuff that we've been it's talking, based off the science, then, then it's, it's not a prescription, then right? Yeah. Well, no, it's not necessarily. No, it is a prescription. If I were to do the same thing and I were to say. Okay, well, here's what happens in you know our ancestral past 100,000 years ago. This is why we're, the machine hasn't changed, yada, yada, yada. Just by saying that, it sounds like I'm giving a prescription. My intent is not to give people a prescription because there's no paint by numbers for your life, okay? Mm -hmm. You get to, it's a blank canvas and you get to put whatever it is that you want on there. I'm gonna provide you with the, the, the paints and the paintbrushes and the easel and all the tools that you need to paint the picture that is your life. But other people want to have a paint by number. Mm -hmm. So they want to have like all these little lines drawn out and you put number, you know, yellow in number 12 and you put green in number eight and you put red and what, all this stuff. And at the end of it, you got this lovely picture of you know cherry blossoms or some shit, yeah. right? That you painted, but you didn't paint it. Yeah. You just colored it in, you just filled it in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not the guy that's going to give you the fill it in I'm not going to give you the, the paint by numbers. There's plenty of if you if that's what you need if you need some if you're a sheep in search of a shepherd, there's plenty of shepherds out there. Yeah, yeah there's, there's tons plenty of, them. of gurus who really want to who really want to make a turn a buck on it and and sort of be your self help. So, I mean, if you look at social media for women, social media for women right now is basically self help. Mm -hmm. they, you want to know why it's the largest section in Barnes and Noble for, you know, if you're going to buy a book <laughs> in psychology, the largest section is self-help. Mm -hmm. It's because everybody wants to have somebody tell them or give them permission to do the shit that they already want to fucking do. Yeah. So that's number one. Now, number two is this, is when you do that, if you, let's just say you're going to take a completely objective approach to telling women, here's, here's, uh, here's how women's nature actually is. That is fucking offensive. I went on Dr. Phil and the one last parting shot that, um, that uh, was it Robin McGraw, his wife, had, had to say was, I don't think anyone can know what women's real nature is. They're just this enigmatic uh, mystery that, and how dare any man try to presume that he could ever understand the fantastic force of nature that is women's feminine mystique and any guy that's telling you that is just full of shit because we're all special snowflakes and everybody's different right mm -hmm. yeah. so that right there when i, I remember they got to get that parting shot in there because they have to clean up the mess that i've created when i went on that show by saying here's women's nature mm -hmm. here's how it is and you guys don't have any counter argument to that except for an emotional appeal after that and that's what you will run into when you try to create sort of this I'm the self-help program for women. Here's how you come and be a red pill woman, right? What you're going to run into eventually is you're going to you know, speak some sort of unflattering truth about women's nature 
And they will, in, initially they'll accept it or they'll reject it out of hand, depending on like how resistant they happen to be to it. But the problem is, it's, it go, comes back to why I always tell guys never to talk about the red pill. If you have a, a woman that you're with, guys always say, well, should I tell her that I'm a red pill guy? No, no, you shouldn't. Because women do not want to be told about the game that they're playing. They want to play the fucking game yeah. itself. Yeah, don't ruin because it. They're applying, they're, because they're applying an emotional, you know, they're, they're prioritizing emotionalism before rationalism. So they want to know that you just get it. A guy who talks about this stuff, a guy who makes Excel spreadsheets about like why some chicks rejected him and some didn't, he's trying to use this deductive logic to get a girlfriend, that makes women want to punch them in the face mm -hmm. because if they're saying, look, honey, I made this Excel spreadsheet of all these reasons why you should marry me, fuck me, breed with me, and have you know live happily ever after with me, they will want to punch that guy in the face because yeah. what you're trying to do is use logic to convince them yeah, to behave, to, 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 yeah. to, to, to select them and to say, well, your hypergamy is bullshit. I know you want to fuck the hot guy in the phone cannon party, mm -hmm. but you, 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 because you have this hot arousal and feeling for him, but you don't for me, even though I would be in the long term the best bet for you, you will never win that argument because you're trying to win an emotional argument. This is the, the long and the short of all mm -hmm. this. You're trying to win an emotional argument with empirical data. Mm -hmm. with women. No, and, uh, and, good, and good point, but... I'm not interested in my girlfriend because she understands the red pill stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, that's, the, that, the re, that's kind of the reason why it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Oh, no, I completely agree with you. And, like, and, I know all about the game of male stuff. Yeah. I've literally, like I told you, bro, I've listened to every one of your streams. Everything that you're saying, man, sometimes you're just preaching to the choir. Like, I know exactly what you're going to say. And, like, the like, thing is, though, like, let me go back to, like, 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 like the prescription thing. Is MOA a prescription? Do you have things in MOA that okay, are that but, are considered? But, but, but it, oh, hold yeah. on, hold on. Is yes. it? Is it? Yes, it is. Okay, it is. It is. But, and, but it's and, and not a red, you, but, but it's not a red pill but, 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 but there's advertently and there's inadvertently. You inadvertently, you inadvertently are giving prescriptions to men because you push MOA. Okay, and because there is there is there is things in MOA that are prescriptions for guys. This is if you do this, you're gonna be successful in this. If you do that, the bottom line is we are all giving out prescriptions all the time because we're in a we are in a hierarchy. We're this is a free market economy, and what it truly shows is whoever has the best prescription wins the game. It's gonna make the most money. Michael's killing it right now because he has some amazing prescriptions compared to all the other people in the it's fucking medical field. Well, well, no, but no. Like the, what the bottom line is, though, is that we're all giving prescriptions and we're all competing on in the free marketplace. There is a hierarchy of who has the best prescriptions. There is go always going to be this hierarchy because we live in a free market economy, and as men, we are always going to compete in this hierarchy. We are always going to disagree on these things. I'm going to say my mentorship is better because of X, and right. you're going to say yours is better for Y. But we're both giving prescriptions, and you support his. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. So, so, so in in the case, first off, of men of action, it's not a red pill prescription. Like for me, I don't I would, think it is. A red yeah. pill prescription. I'm, I'm just saying it like is I, a prescription, I, though, and men in the manosphere give out prescriptions. I recommend everyone read the E Myth Revisited and Managing Oneself by Peter F. Drucker. That's not red mm -hmm. pill stuff. So, mm -hmm. partially, yes, it's o it's overall male improvement. In fact, we avoid dating in the program, even though you're surrounded by beautiful women all yeah. the time. The thing, though, is what we do is like what you said before. We try to base it in evolutionary psychology, so there's nothing that we say that would sit, go against what Dr. Buster. It's the smartest thing by right. science standards, yes. Right. But the thing, going back to your prescription thing, I'm also not as big as Zerka, Sneeko, uh, you know, uh, Myron and Fresh, or even like Adam Sostek, and they're not specifically doing, well, uh, Myron obviously is doing a lot of prescription stuff, they are, but like they're not popular because of their prescriptions, they're popular because of the crazy stuff that they do online. Descriptions, especially well, well, Sostek. It's, yeah. it's not even that, it's like, the idea of the man and woman on a panel where there's more women than men and then women are then held accountable, the audience is 95% men and they want to see they blood. They want to live vicariously. Yeah. This is not prescription or description. They want to see blood. And, yes. and if, if I were to say, like, I had Rich Sheffern on my show yesterday on my podcast. Rich Sheffern has consulted on so many nine-figure companies. He invented the, the uh, automated webinar and was one of the first people to use a VSL in history. Mm -hmm. okay. This guy could make you $50 million if you listen to him. Nobody watched the show. If I made a video right now and I hit my I hit up my uh, guys and I was like, uh, I just this is the title of the video. I don't even care what it is. Delusional modern woman 304 gets destroyed by red pill. Mm -hmm. I don't. It doesn't matter if there's there's no women in the thing. Uh, Fifty thousand views. Okay, yeah. I like, A B tested that one time too. Like yeah. if you use modern woman in a title, yeah. you're gonna go up. If you use destroyed oh, yeah. or heated debate or emergency pot like there's certain like like Keywords. combinations of words that are going to always play play really really yeah well. um, yeah. 
Well, no, no just, I, I, I also want to bring up the gamma male thing really so quick too. Go, go ahead, Michael. I thought you said chamomile for a second. You said gamma male. Yeah, yeah, gamma male. My, my I, bad. I, so, but no, so like I, I love box box diversity. Like I know you know about box. Like like I've heard you talk about it a lot. With still in with yeah. the box day. Yeah, so like I really like his videos. And the thing is, you're completely correct. It is such a gamma male tendency to want to teach women these things or even say it. It's yeah. huge gamma male. The difference is though. There's a way you say it. If you say things a certain way, you can say things with Riz. You can you can teach because the thing is, bro. Actually, I, I know for a no fact you could. Yeah. I know for a fact you can say these things in a certain way that can make yeah, a woman but, but, be turned on by you because intelligence does turn on some women. Those are two different things. So like when we do when we do Access Vegas, so it's an example of like. Uh, do you remember when Savannah Storm was sitting across from me and she goes, I I am a sapiosexual. Do you remember yes, this? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. so Savannah Storm. Or if they, if they right. drop in like astrology or yes. tarot cards. So Savannah Storm, who I'm, who I'm good friends with, and this is the reason why I, I disagree with what you're saying. I do care about Savannah Storm as a friend. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't think we can be plutonic friends. We are. But Savannah Storm is a successful real estate agent who fucks her boyfriend on browsers mm -hmm. and then tells us that she wants a sapiosexual, and then I look at her and I'm like, your last two boyfriends are probably the best looking VIP host in Las Vegas, and then the lead stripper from for Thunder, for, not Thunder from Down Under, uh, Chippendales. Like, when you go to the Rio, there's a picture of a guy holding his hand out to pull you in to the, it's him. That's her boyfriend yeah. that she fucks on Brazzers. <laughs> and she's telling me she's a sapiosexual. Well, I'm not gonna no, argue, no, no, those no, women no, are definitely no, not but sapiosexuals, it's not, but it's bro. Not, but it's not those women, that's the problem. This you is have what, a special type of women on your show, bro. I, know, I, just, I disagree. You do, yes you do, bro. That's one of my big arguments for I, I, did, I disagree. And the reason why is because we consistently look for a Katie Moore or uh, the Lieutenant Amy, or we always try to get two, like I do. I don't know. If What's you know the this. youngest girl you've had on the show? Uh, probably Kylie. Twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Kylie and, like, and Maya. Maya's twenty one. Yeah, but there's several girls that are in their forties. We we try to split married, not married. Yeah. We try to split only. Oh, there's always fewer than half the girls have OnlyFans, except for our first episode. Fewer than half the girls have OnlyFans. We look for at least two master's degrees. I look for at least two girls that are married. I look for like one or two girls that have kids. You'll notice that I actually do look for a distribution. The, the difference is, and this is the argument I keep getting, it's, no bro, it's those girls. I will say, to an extent, with what Myron and Fresh have to deal with, because they have to do three shows a week, and you have to repeat, and those girls are looking for clout, for sure. A bunch of the girls that come on our show aren't even looking for clout. They have no idea about it. They're legitimately friends about it. They want to be on our show like, because like, they saw some other yeah, because like, You cannot like, compare, though. You cannot, in good faith, compare me getting recruiting women that are straight up normal women that yeah. I don't pay, just literally mass DMing tons pay, of fucking women. Same thing, I know, I know, but yeah. what I'm saying is, you, you are a strip club manager, bro. You're very good friends with a lot of women mm -hmm. that most guys would have never had the opportunity with yeah. because of your job. So because of that and the women that you're able to bring on, mm -hmm. those are not normal women. And I, I get the, I hate this about That's Fresh and Fit too, normal. because here's the thing, I've even heard you say this multiple times where, where you're like, where, where you'll bring up, oh, they've had on a thousand blah, blah, blah amount of girls and they're mm -hmm. all this. The thing is my girlfriend and every girl I've ever even dated and a lot of the women that I know would never even go to Miami on a trip. So, so the fact that they're like, oh, but there's all these women from all these other states, the type of women that live in Miami, the type of women that go to Miami, are a type of woman, and that's but not there, all. There girls that come on, there's girls that come on our show that would never go on to Miami. So can I can, I can I can I interject here yeah. real quick because I have this handy here. Thank you, Big Mo, because uh, he, he updates me on this all the time. On Fresh and Fit, uh, two thousand one hundred and thirty-two female guests as of May fifteenth. Ages, 18 to 46, mm -hmm. so that's a pretty good demographic. That would be a demographic you could do a psychological study from. I agree. Uh, from 45 U.S. states, 61 different countries, with 181 different job titles, including unemployment, and only 159 Frank Castles out of 21,000. Uh, 20, 20, I, I can destroy it's, this it's whole a, argument, it's bro. A, it's a, it's I, a I can literally... But I believe it's a combined sixty thousand body count. Is that correct? Is it Big Mo? Yeah, Mo, Big Mo somebody, you, somebody went and did that. Big Mo, could you could you uh, could you update on that? So Bro, I think it's a sixty thousand body. Count. I can body this whole yeah. argument yeah. though. It's completely false. It's completely false. It's the same way why guys are like the all women are hoes. No, no, I'll explain to you why it's completely false. It's the exact same reason why all guys are always like all women are hoes. All women are hoes. I have tons of guys that I have to help all the time, and they think all women are hoes, and I have to say, hey, no, go here, go do 
do this. Don't date here. Don't use dating apps. And when they do these certain things, they find good women, okay? The problem is the, like there's a bubble of people in relationships that are women, and then there's the single girls. When the, when the bubble girls that get out of the relationship bubble, they get grabbed really quick. If they're a relationship girl. No, I agree, yeah. And, and so, so, so the thing is, the type of girls that live in Miami, the type of girls that go on trips to Miami mm. are a certain type of hoe. And those girls, yes, I don't disagree with that. But what I'm saying in Dallas, so Texas. saying 2132, and, as of May, are, they're all hoes. No, I'm saying I'm saying there's a type of girl. This is very simple. There's a type of girl that stays single, and there's also a type of girl that lives in Vegas, that lives in Miami, that wants to live in major cities and like have clout or be only fans girls. And what I'm saying is in Miami, there's a concentration of that. And the types of girls that travel to Miami are hoes. Because like I said, I've had multiple girlfriends who have never gone to Miami in their life. You can find tons of young women that have not that aren't hoes and haven't done that. So when it, but, well, it's all but, but no. The reason why I bring this up is because it's always all women are hoes or, or, or the women in Miami we're, we're, are just like the women not, across the country. Saying, we're not saying they're hoes, but like, here's the thing, right? If, if, when you look at, if you've been on one of my calls, one of the things you will notice that is stunning. So we'll do, we'll go on Zoom and you can show 49 people at once. The distribution of, of ethnicities is always shocking to me. There are just as many black people as there are Asian people, as there are white people. I have clients in China, I have clients in France. And the reason, and I look at the guys and I always show them, and I was like, guys, there was no effort on our part to normally distribute you guys, none. Mm -hmm. You are distributed, why? Because the, the struggles that we see as men are ubiquitous amongst homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with women. My point is evolutionary psychology is the same. The difference is the stimulus. I don't think they're like I've said this before, and I don't know if you agree with this. I think what causes a woman to have a higher body count is not um, it could it's something to do with her upbringing and genetics, but I actually think it has a lot to do with how many high status males is she around growing up. Yeah. Meaning, a girl with a low body count is all of a sudden living on Charing Cross at the Playboy Mansion, and every week she's meeting a member of Metallica. And then, like normally, this girl would have had a three body count, but because she lives at the Playboy Mansion, she's uh, it goes up higher. So, is she a hoe, or is the stimulus that she's exposed to changing? I shouldn't have used the word hoe because the thing is, it's not. It's <laughs> That's not okay. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Uh, I, I, should, I shouldn't have used that word, but like the reality is it's just those type of girls. Like because remember, like a girl can go and do all these things, go on yachts and do all this stuff, and maybe she has a three body count. So I'm not gonna sit here and say hoes. I'm just saying there's a certain type of woman that wants validation from other from, from men in all types of ways. And the type of woman that goes to Miami is usually the type of girl that is wanting that type of validation. You came from Texas, right? Yeah. From Dallas. Today from Texas? Yeah, from Dallas. Okay. On your way out of the TSA in Texas. And you were going from TSA to to the gate. Did you look around you and see the people who are walking by you in the in the airport? Yeah. yeah. I do the same thing. I, I make, in fact, when you leave, when you go through Vegas, and you get through TSA, just put your phone away and walk from TSA to whatever gate you happen to be at, mm -hmm. and people watch. That's normal. Those are normal people. The normal woman right now is a hundred is five eight, five seven, and hundred and eighty pounds. Yeah. She is a beach ball. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, keep that in mind. I also have to put myself, in fact, it was the first thing that I said when we started working together, like I think it was after the first time we went to Zook or maybe a second time. And I said, you know, we have to remember, we have to bear in mind, I don't know if you remember me telling you this, we have to bear in mind that we're in a frame of reference right now that most guys will never have. That doesn't mean that what we're saying to them, to, to these women who, and by the way, we, we want high caliber women. We're in Vegas, that's what's expected here. So one of the number one things, and that's why I ask you, what is a normal woman? Because I have been asking that question since October of last year when we started this show. Because every goddamn troll in the chat says, when are you gonna get more normal women on there? When are you gonna, like these girls, they're all fake. They've got Kardashian lips, they've got plastic tits, they've got you know Brazilian butt lifts. Yeah. Look, just look at them, they're all pros and everything like that. I'm like, trust yeah, me, they don't want normal. They don't uh, watch my show, they don't but want they, normal. That's the thing is, like, first of all, the guys who are watching these shows, they don't want normal. You're right, okay? yeah, a thousand percent. But what we're saying is applicable to the chick that's here in Las Vegas, as well as a girl who's like married to the guy who runs a tractor in the Midwest in Oklahoma. I'll agree with so, that. A thousand percent, yeah. That's another thing I've brought up over and over again, not just about women, but the fact that the red pill has to be applicable to everybody. It's for the every man or it's for no one. Yeah. And so it's got to be equally applicable to the guy who's sitting on a tractor in Oklahoma, as well as the guy who's draped across a, a Lamborghini in well, Miami. Or the but, woman that, that lives in a shack or the woman uh, that's a rich I, I, I think I think it's more constructive for us to be better and then attract a lot of women and then pick the one with the fewest red flags. Mm -hmm. Because the the thing about the hoes or whatever, like there's no there's no way the audience 
normal men, no, no offense to you guys, normal dudes do not comment on YouTube videos. I'm sorry to piss you guys off. Like I, I've talked to, I talked to Adam Sosnick for half an hour last night. I was like, Adam, have you ever commented on a YouTube video? And he's like, before I started yeah, no. on YouTube, I never did. Yeah. So we can't look at that also as a normal distribution. The other thing is we've had two, we've had two former Miss Nevadas on our show, mm -hmm. Lisa Song Sutton and T mm -hmm. Tiana Jacqueline. Miss Nevadas, okay? Mm -hmm. And they don't have a ton of plastic surgery and neither does Maya and neither does fucking, uh, 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 Katie Moore and other my girlfriend, other than I'm her boob job, has zero. Sure, I'm pretty sure Maya has a boob job. No, Maya has a boob job. Other than that, she yeah, by the way, boob, job, boob jobs yeah. don't count. Boob jobs are perfect. Yeah. Boob jobs are incredible. We love them. We boob love jobs them. are incredible. Yeah. All right. Cosmetic surgeons, if you want to sponsor the show, yeah, yeah for sure. But, the, but, the, but the, the point is, even with that, we get Tiana Jacqueline's a, a ran through hoe. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Lisa Song Sutton, why, why doesn't she shut up? Well, she makes like fucking eight figures a year flipping real estate and she mm. was Miss Nevada and she's a practicing attorney and that is still not good enough yeah. for you. So it's yeah. like the problem there's is- There's no way to win. There's no way to win this. You so can't like, satisfy. It's like, it's like debating flat earthers. There's no way to win. Their audience is still gonna tell uh, you that you lost. Oh uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and like just, just to kind of define what I was saying, like what I'm saying by normal is like a girl that hasn't been ruined yet. Like what I like to say is that it takes to it, like when I, when I hope, when I coach guys and stuff like that, when I give out my prescriptions, I don't like them going over a certain age on women because those women are usually a lot and love devoted to their job. The had too much sex. There's usually some type of trauma that comes along with her age because I've always had young women and I've, I found this, this, this really big pattern where it's like, Oh, if they're always within this age bracket, I get to mold them and they're not already molded. So like, I'm just saying like normal is more the girls that just haven't been ruined yet. Like, and, and I'm saying that we can find those girls, every guy's opportunity to get one of those after their first or second relationship out of high school, whenever, you know, when, whenever they first get back into the dating market, but a lot of guys are listening to Myron saying, get 50 buyers or something. They might meet that really good girl. She got out of her first relationship. She's 21 years old. She's actually a good girl, but Myron's like, no, you need to get 50 bodies and he's only on 14. So you're number 15 girl and get the fuck out of here. So then like, you're just, you're, what, you're, what you're describing is a prescription. Get 50 body counts and then you get a 50 body count. I mean, if that's the case, then I still haven't achieved that, that record number because yeah. my body count's only 41. Yeah. And I'll tell you what's funny is whenever I... Um, whenever I eat, when I was working with Pat Campbell, for example, I would, I would, uh, I was, I remember once I was on his terrestrial radio show and he had asked me like, just point blank, you know, what's your, what's your, what is your body count? Right. And so I said something like 41, 42. Right. And, um, every woman in the radio studio at, you could hear this collective gasp behind, like they could, they thought I was a man whore because I had a 40 plus body count. Right. But then I got to go listen to some dude who tells me he's got 1600 you know, body and four, four transsexuals on his, uh, on his, you know, as part of his number. And, and, and then I, you, people shouldn't listen to me because I haven't quite measured up to, to that. So that 1400. So, so what's the, what's the litmus test? What's the balance? What, where, where do you go? Is there, is there a number? And the problem is now you're running into why I don't do prescriptions. Yeah. I'm Rolo fucking Tomasi. My body count is 41. Okay. Yeah. According to Myron, Myron's prescription, I'm still a beta male blue pill chump because I haven't been able to sort of crack that crack. Uh, uh, unless you're going to count blowjobs because apparently the CDC says it, yeah, like, if you get is, oral sex, that, 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 that ups your number. I wasn't was trying to bring I, Myron but, up. But, but, I, yeah. I know that's a joke. But here's the thing is like, if I say, okay, well, having like, you know, penetrative sex with women, that that's going to be one number. If I'm getting a Hummer, well, gosh, I spent a lot of time in Hollywood and my rocks are 20. So maybe I got to reassess that. Right. But the very fact that I even, that's even funny or I have to reassess that shows you just how subjective and relative people's prescriptions are. So if, the, if you're going to be a Myron Gaines man, then maybe you have to at least get 50 body count before you can like really have a, an, a, you know, an objective, like relative understanding of the quality of a woman. I've said this, and it's in my first book, is spin plates, date non-exclusively, and you know, if you have a rotation of three or four women, most guys are never gonna be able to do that, or they wouldn't even consider it because it's just something that goes against their convictions. Or it's not gonna be all at the same else. time, it's gonna be falling but, off. And it's so, again, it's you also hear people who say, well, you gotta spam approaches. It's just like numbers, 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 right? Get a, they'll, they'll make machines on the on, on, on Tinder so that it'll actually literally like a finger swipe will them. swipe through them yeah. because that's that, it's just this mass production of trying to get hits from, from women, and I'm saying, I've said this, I put this in my fifth book, I just was just talking about it on the on one of the class videos that I was doing yesterday, is it's not about numbers, it's about persistence. 
It's about learning from your experiences from making those approaches. So I've always said, if you're gonna make approaches at all, do one per week with, a, with, a, with a, a one single woman because most guys, at the end of a year, you've got 52 approaches. 52 is Such a low way number. more, but way more than the average normal guy will do in a fucking lifetime. So, so do this, what is, the, uh, what is the point you're trying to make, the evidence that you're trying to put forth uh, towards this point? Because I, I understand your, your point is that it's not a normal distribution of women. And like, to be fair, I only know really hot girls. What, 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 so what I'm saying is, bad, is there's a perception issue going on. There's a huge perception issue going on. Well, what, so the what guys is, that are single, the, 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 the problem is these guys, though, they, they, they complain about women being hoes. Like, we see this all the time. And they're giving out prescript or anybody says, use dating apps. I'm completely against dating apps. Completely against them. They're only for hooking up. They're, now, now, don't get me wrong. There's, I have a sister who has an amazing. Jody, Jody got married. Remember? Yeah. Or no, last this, day, don't, Playboy model. Don't get me wrong. I, like I said, I have a sister who's literally married because of a dating app. So I'm not going to say or say it doesn't work for everybody. But I'm going to say on a general basis, 51 percent, 60 percent, it's not going to work. And the guys can go build real connect. If these guys get off their fucking phones and they go live in real life and they take my prescription, and they go where I tell them to go and they do things I tell them to do, they're going to have a way better time and they're going to and they're actually going to learn something instead of sitting there and sending a thousand messages to girls. They're there's nothing, there's nothing good about sticking the technology on something that is all natural and all real. And that, like my whole point is that if these guys go into real life and get off the dating apps and stop going to clubs, they will stop running into this perception of hoes and there are these perception of these women that need all this validation. If you go to certain places, you can find young women that don't want that validation yet. What are those places? I don't give it out for free. I'm about to have a test. Wait, wait, hey, wait, hey, chat, chat, chat. You just scared me. I can't go to clubs no more. What are you talking no, about? I, well, I'm so excited. I, 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 I want to see um, Dead I want to see Dead Mouse. Club, club, the, clubs, clubs, no, 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 no. It's none of those, and that's why I love college campus. No, no, no. It's none of those. But like, place. It's really sad beach. because y'all can all think about it. Last time they put it in chat on on value tainment because somebody started thinking about it and really figured out. But if you think about long enough, because the thing is, all these girls, I've talked to you about this. There's a there's a there's a fuck girl tier list, and at the top of the fuck girl tier list is uh michael's friends no, 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 just kidding but like the only fans girls are at the very top of a fuck girl tier list that's an s tier these girls are such fuck girls you do not want to fuck if you're a guy a normal guy with five body count this girl is going to finesse the fuck out of you she knows yeah, so that, much that about so, she has so much have a conversation with yeah, yeah 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 but but say he did message her and she wanted a thousand dollars like she can get it out of him because she she's had so that much social experience girl, I make, make no, no, like a sugar baby no no well i'm just explaining really quick it yeah. all goes back to validation okay when i talk about this tier list so these girls at the very top of this tier Actually, list i think it's more about trans action but continue. yeah but like but 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 whenever you're a girl with a hundred thousand followers or you're making so much money you're getting so many dms no guy can replace that level of validation there's not a guy in the world that can give you that amount of there's energy. a way there's a way there's a way the way is is through massive pre-selection like it is. Oh yeah, yeah. Through massive. Right, yeah. Right. If you were the guy that a hundred other women wanted, fucking for sure. Wait, I mean, yeah. it doesn't even have to be wanted. It's like I, because my guys in my program, they have the guest list to every big party in the city. They get the validation. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, like, but like see, my, oh, my clients last night just took two Playboy models to EBC because I knew the girls. I hooked them up with my clients, and then they went in there. There was no money transacted. But the problem is, we can't like. There is a way for us to be the bigger, better deal. Now, for a lot of guys, they're like, well, I don't want to do that. Now, for me, I'm like Caleb from the Old Testament, you know, from uh, uh, Abraham. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want the big grapes. Mm -hmm. I'm ambitious. What you're saying is correct, but like, I want, I actually still want to date insanely hot See, women. and I, I, I hugely disagree with like what you chase. Like, so, I hugely, I don't like girls that have anything done. I like all natural. I push all natural in everything in my listen, life, okay? At some so, point, those implants were made by something on earth. Am I wrong? I, well, Plastic yeah. comes from somewhere. Yeah, it does. I love it when I get this one too because like people go, I don't like plastic tits. That's, that's a red no, flag. She's out of here. But here's the thing: is most guys like if you're born, well, if you're born in Gen X, like if you if you're born in the last two generations, you have probably don't even know what a natural breast looks like <laughs> unless you see some sort of National Geographic, you know, study of like women in the tropics just, of Africa or something like th that. Those they women don't even are know what red, it looks like. But those women, like those women, are red flags. Like I don't care what anybody says. I would never date a girl like that. Ever a girl t over twenty five having tit jobs likes validation has an Instagram with, with with ten twenty thousand followers. Bro, you came here? Do you want us to set you Dude, up? Dude, no, 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 for real. I, I think that those girls who need that level of validation or they have all that attention bro, coming in, those idea, are the last girls the you want to be with. Idea. Why would you no, want to be in a relationship no, no with a girl offense, that wants no offense, attention from other no, people? No offense, Sergio. But the idea you wouldn't be in a, in a relationship with Maya 
or fucking eat. <laughs> like it's so I ridiculous. dead ass, bro. I have literally turned so- <laughs> Michael. I have turned down so many. Or my girl, oh, Masha Michael. did a like oh, Masha didn't want to go out with him. But he'd be like, no, Michael, I'm not gonna do that because I have no. Michael, Michael, Michael would I fuck a hoe? Would I fuck a hoe? Yes. I, would I be in a relationship with one or even try to date her? Clip. Fuck no. <laughs> I, I think no. I think it, you might have some difficulty. No, I would. The no. thing is, I would never want to be in a, the, in a relationship. Like, like the thing is, okay, so just just so we're clear, like. Kylie only has a boob job because she had breast cancer. Kylie was 20 when I met her, and she's been with very few people. And so that's why I'm with her. But but, but you're a high-status guy who was able to use pre-selection to prove or to pick the absolute best she hates one. my pre-selection. But, like most, she hates but, that I'm with but most guys can't do that. They're just yeah. going to simp for that type of girl, and then they get fucked over. Okay? That, like, now, if you're that guy, or if you're that guy, totally go for those girls. Okay? I got tons of guys, tons of friends in my city yeah. who are those guys that wear all Versace, all the money stuff, and they love being with the girl with the big lips and the big tits and the big ass, and no. they love oh, that, and, my, that, and that's fine. Just the tits. The rest yeah. of it, I don't need well, I, I, I know you're Just not involved. Just but, yes. but, like, I see that dynamic, and it's like, you know what? Y'all can go do that. that that's cute. That, that's y'all's relationship. I would never fucking want that, though, yeah. ever. Ever and like and I don't want any guy to ever end up with one of those girls because they're fucking horrible. Now you might have like a good one and you can pick out a good one because you can use pre-selection to pick between a hundred different girls. But most of these guys who simp for these fucking girls with these OnlyFans or these Instagram accounts and shit, they're fucking that losers. Most the average guy doesn't actually vet for a woman. He tends to just get with the, the girl that happens to be the, the right person. Well, 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 well that's why I teach pre-selection too, Michael. Yeah. That's why I also teach and pre-selection. But I teach it through a whole different way than you do because of that. That's why we see what the divorce rate is right now. That's why we see men, like men making very bad decisions because they don't vet because they don't have any they don't have any uh, or they're choosing over twenty five only fan or Instagram they're, models they're like try, it's not going to work. Trust me. That again, let's do the experiment. Walking from TSA to your gate. Tell me how many of those women that count on the on your hand, maybe make a mental note right. How many women do you think going from TSA to your gate? How many of them could possibly make money on only? Okay, so because your normal woman looks like those chicks that you're going to pass. Yeah, she could definitely make money too. 75% of the population is overweight. 40% of women are morbidly obese, Mm. okay? In the United States anyways. I'm probably worse in London. But um, the the point of this is is that when you come up with saying, well, I only want normal girls. I only have more respect for myself. Natural normal. Yeah, natural, natural women. The natural women you're talking about are the girls you're going to see from TSA going to your gate, right? You don't want to get with a single one of those girls. I guarantee it, okay? So, I don't, how old are you? I'm 32. 32, okay. So, you're 32 years old. So, you're kind of like getting into like the, you're looking at the long term. Do you have a girlfriend? You have yeah, a long term girlfriend? I've been with her for three years. Okay. Does she live with you? Yeah. Okay. So, that's, there, there is that. Um, the other part of this is that. Whenever I have dealt with people talking about, we want normal girls, we want normal this, we want normal, I always ask them, I say, show me a picture of a normal girl. Show me a picture of the ideal chick that you want to get with. I'm still waiting on that fucking picture. Nobody, for all the people who have tried to send me stuff or tried to tell me that we don't get normal girls on the show or Fresh and Fit doesn't have normal girls, I even had to convince like Jedediah Bila of all people saying like, look, here's the demographics. We keep these right. We, that's, we have the stats. We have the tract. The perception they are. bias. Okay. We can also say this. For instance, I was on a show with, uh, with Myron and Fresh and I was sitting, uh, it was one of the earlier shows. And I was sitting next to this girl who was like 19 years old and they were going and asking the body count question. And she says, oh, I have 15 body count and she's 19 years old. That's, that's what's the, what's the average for, for people? It's like probably six. Like yeah. six, yeah. Seven, yeah. six. Okay, yeah. six. So I'm like, let's stand in next to this girl and she's already made her prerequisite six and, and then some, right? And she's having more sex and most likely most of the guys that she knows who are 19 years Where old. Was well. Where was it? Where was this? Fresh and Fit. It's on Fresh and Fit. And I was like, okay, so, I can understand that if, in that instance, if I were just to take that experience and say, oh, well, all women are just bitches and hoes, you know, they're just tricks and hoes, right? Mm-hmm. I could I could draw, on if, if that's where I was at and my mentality was not that of a 50-year-old man and that of a, like a 19-year-old guy, then yeah, I can I could totally understand and I can relate. And you're right, I'll, I'll meet you halfway here. You are correct that there are a lot of guys who go and will take this and they live vicariously through these shows, through whatever, through, oh, hell, even Access Vegas. Uh, you know, fresh and fit, because they have this mentality. It's like the NASCAR or racing, right? They're not there to see who wins the race. They're there to see the car crash. 
when Kevin Samuels was very, very popular, it wasn't because he was telling these bitches what, what they wanted to say. So, I mean, they did. But they wanted to her, they wanted him to get her. Like, get her, get her. Roast her. Get her, get her, get her. It's, it's, it's a bread, Blood and, store, yeah. bread and circuses, right? And so we are on Access Vegas, and we don't kick girls off as a, as a policy, but we our mission is not to kick women off the show. But when we actually have that conversation and we're trying to win the race instead of create a car crash on the show, people say we go soft on them. They think that we are the ones that are soft. So yes, in a way, you're correct about the fact that there's a certainly a demographic of guys who watch this and have that perception. Again, if we're going to use them as an isolated sort of, you know, this is a subgroup of like the normal guys, do normal guys do that? I don't think so. Again, walk through the walk through the airport and count how many of those guys do you think will be watching me or or or, or Mike or a Fresh and Fit or who will be a part of that. I get recognized occasionally in Reno, like once or twice in Reno. I walk through Las Vegas, I get I get recognized quite a bit. Or if I go through Dallas or uh, Dallas uh, airport, yeah, airport yeah. or Denver, or I go to Miami. I'm gonna get. But this is I get to remember it's a small fraction of the overall population of the world right now. So. Bear that in mind when you're making these assessments. The other thing is, is that when you get to a point of uh, being in this this space for as long as like I have, I've been married for t today, as a matter of fact, 27 years. Okay, so yeah. so when I go and I start talking about things, people think I'm anti-marriage because I I have been married for as long as I have. And how can he possibly say this? He can't, don't listen to anything Rollo says. He's married, mm -hmm. and then I've got the I've got the people on TradCon side who said, "Well, Rollo's red pill, and he tells you to avoid marriage and get a vasectomy and do all this other bullshit, mm -hmm. right?" So therefore, I don't win on either side because I'm right in the middle. I'm the one who's talking objective truth. So I would say, look, it seems the way we do marriage right now, and me being in a successful marriage for 27 years with a woman that I very much love and still have great sex with, right? After all of that, I'm still saying marriage the way we do it now is a bad idea for guys because it's a downside risk for guys. I agree Look with you on that. Before you, like you might say, I'm in love with her, I'm going to get married, I want, I want to have babies, I want to, okay, that's fine. Or my religion says I'm supposed to do this, okay, good. But just go in with both your fucking eyes open. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. In fact, that's my whole point is I'm not trying to tell guys what to do. I'm just saying, like, here's the information. Use this as actionable information and make educated decisions for yourself. Now, is that what's happening on Fresh and Fit? Is that what's happening on whatever? Is that what's happening on these other? No, those are entertainment fucking programs. Are they relating some of this? Even Adam Sosnick, are they relating red pill facts and figures and things like that? Yes, but they're also saying, well, can you believe what happened to Kiki Palmer today? Can you believe what happened with, they want uh, Margot Robbie to be Barbie? Barbie? You know, that's, that's like red meat for those guys. With, rather that it's like sizzle and steak, that's all sizzle. There's no fucking steak there. Mm -hmm. So the problem that I see right now with most of quote unquote your red pill influencers is that it's all sizzle and no fucking steak. They know they, they know how to provoke. They know the questions to ask. They know the topics to hit on. They they want to hit like that. You want to know why Pearl is it is the female Andrew Tate? It's because she quotes stats that we come up with all the fucking time and misquotes them, and then you get like somebody like Pierce Morgan brings on some some rabid feminist to call her on a point that she is unable to defend. She has no idea how to do that because she's not about it. She's an entertainer. She's not red pill. Yeah. So when we're talking about the overall, um, the, 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 the difference between say red pill theory and game as a practice, those are two different things. And the problem is, is that people try to take red pill theory or theory, or they try to take the empirical side of red pill and turn it into a fucking game show. They try to make it Maury Povich. They try to take the most aggravating parts of that. And by the way, there are some very positive aspects and flat, very flattering aspects of female nature. This great book I'm reading right now is called uh, uh, "Was It Positive uh, Evolutionary Psychology," and I, I, I'll, I'll put the uh, the, uh, the Amazon link in there. But it's it's really great because it's meant to focus because evolutionary psychology gets a very bad rap yeah. because it's always talking about you know war brides it's talking about alpha widows it's talking about you know what uh, hypergamy in the sense that's alpha. I love what God's thoughts said all about that all that. Of, yeah, yeah, fantastic. But I think people like really resist that first of all because it says evolution in the name, but it's also um, it, it can be pretty ugly. It can be pretty unflattering. So like for instance, like when like for instance, say when a a uh, alpha male gorilla or chimp or whatever 
uh, deposes the, the the former alpha that was you know leader of the pack or whatever. The first impulse of that of that primate is to kill off the offspring of all of the all the the rival uh, the rival alpha that he either killed or ran off. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens with lions and wolves and stuff like that as well. There's a tendency for the new alpha to go in and kill off all of the the offspring there. And then we can talk about the evolutionary reasons for that, the latent purposes for all of that when it comes down to just raw, you know, d the mathematics of DNA, right? Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, the women or the females in that troop or in that pack or whatever, it sends them into estrus so that they can have babies again. That sounds pretty fucked up when it comes to like human beings. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Nature's weird, yeah. But we also can relate that to things like, I'm just giving you an example here. We can relate that to things where if a woman divorces her bio the biological father of her children and brings another man into that living situation, it is like eight to 10 times more likely that that child will either be killed or be a, a subject of abuse by the non-biological mm -hmm. new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. That's pretty ugly. Mm -hmm. Women don't wanna fucking hear that. Yeah. You can't sugarcoat that shit and it goes right back to the primate thing where they kill, they kill off the offspring. Well, they can't actually kill the offspring, but they can abuse the fuck out of that offspring, right? So when you bring up an unflattering truth about women, something like, something like that, and they don't have any counter argument to it, that's when we have to question the motives of the person relating that to it. And that comes back to your point of, of tone. I cannot, like the, the argument you just gave me is exactly what I would expect from a chick. Because I've heard yeah, this your tone. over and over. I don't think You're, it's tone, bro. Have you ever heard me yell on my show? No, no, it's not tone. No, no, it's no, not tone. Your thing is like you can say it in a different way. You can yeah, make it more powerful. You can riz it, bro. Well, I'm telling you, let's, talking. Let's, let's, let's go back to the but beginning. You, but yeah. you can't riz it. You, you can't. That's the problem. Yeah, the, the, you can. the, the, the tone, point you is, can. the point is, no one is. Remember, like. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the most, best way to say it. Baby, if you're hearing this, don't don't listen to me. Close a right. lot of the girls in the first, especially the first part of the show, I was seeing off camera. Okay, I know their lives intimately, and no one was nicer and more political about this shit than me. I was getting made fun of all the time, but in exchange for that, we knew truths about these girls that Myron and Fresh don't know about those girls. Like yeah. girls will say body count, and I actually know, I know <laughs> all of your for boyfriends. Fact, yes. I know who you're dating. So for me, it was a little bit more scientific when we would have these discussions. Mm -hmm. And even with that, they don't change behavior. They can't. You're telling a, a vampire to, hey, listen, the, the problems I, with drinking I blood. I agree. It's just, they want to play the game and not be told that they are playing a game. It yes. goes back to it's the observer, uh, uh, observer effect, which is observing a process changes the process. If I go, and like you said, if I, if I go and I say, okay, um, ladies, here's the red pill. I'm writing a book or whatever it is. Here's the ladies red pill kind of thing. The, the very act that I'm handing them the book is observing the well, process. And, and there's two things before, because the, the thing we say, they, people say red pill, you can't teach the deer how to catch the deer. You can't yeah. ask the deer how to catch the deer. Mm -hmm. and, but you're not even trying to do that. You're trying to legitimately help them. And there's only one thing I say to women to help them. There's a, that's it. If a man wants to marry you, he asks you to marry him. <laughs> if a man wants to have sex with if a man is not having sex with you, it's because he doesn't want to have sex with you. There's no, we're very simple, right? Mm -hmm. If you just pay attention to a man's actions, that's it. If I was, if mm -hmm. he, he has a daughter, if I had a daughter and I was like talking to my daughter and my daughter was like, well, you know, he says we're gonna get married, but it's been like two years. I'd be like, then take all the words out and then tell me what happened. It's like, we've been going out two years and he hasn't asked me to marry him. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I, you can really tell mm -hmm. women with men because her physical attractiveness, a a dating coach for a woman is called a personal trainer. Sorry, I know that's really sexist. <laughs> no, it's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. truth. But like when you <laughs> see the women on my show that are attractive, they're not attractive because they understand evolutionary psychology. Just like the men who I've seen. The reason why I got really good with women was not because I followed pickup artists. It was because I lived in Atlanta in 07 and watched these male whores, these fucking, oh my God, dude, this, whores. Th these dudes that were uh, club promoters. And they were just like tearing through women. And I was like, okay, what are they doing versus what are the pickup artists saying? And I watched, and that's where I got the female friend thing. It was completely from watching club promoters mm -hmm. and guys who manage strip clubs. Uh, getting this coalition, it's almost like George Bush invading Iraq, getting the coalition of the willing, getting a coalition of women on my side everywhere I went. I learned that from club promoters, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the point I'm trying to make is then me explaining it to them, it does nothing. It does yeah, not. nothing, bro. And like, you understand, Kindly Myers is one of my best friends, and I, she asked me about the red pill shit, but in the end, when it comes down to it, she still believes in soulmates and true love and like all this stuff. It's like, it never really works. And then the best example of all, and baby, I don't mean to pick on you, but my girlfriend saying that guys who are around a lot of girls look gay 
and she's dating like, me. Maybe she's, it just like it's just. Was she lucky saying something about yeah, you? The dissonance is so thick. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. The medium is the message is what it is. So like, I again, getting back to the tone thing, I, I have women tell me this all the time. This would be such great, this is great information. And more women would really accept this and read this and acknowledge this and internalize this if you changed your tone, if you didn't present it in such a way. In fact, I even had uh, way back when Chris Williamson had his like 500 subscriber party or his Q&A, somebody was asking if he was going to have me on the show. And the first thing he says was, well, you know, I really th would like to get Rolo on, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I don't know, his, just his demeanor and his delivery, it sounds like he's so gleeful about this stuff. And it's like this, this tone. It's like, it's not the fucking tone. It is the actual information that I am relating. I could go and say the same thing that I say every time, every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. I could say exactly the same thing in a monotone voice like this yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Of it and all I'm saying is like, I, I could just be just straight let, blank let, face let, the let, whole thing. And people would still hate let, it. Let me let me give you the information. But what if I say what you say in a whole different way, man? I'm talking everything that you What's say, what, but I try to speak. Give man, I can't because the girls aren't here. But if, if I was on a show with girls, I could literally like y'all could see if y'all wanted to see me work out, y'all could. See it. Let, and let, whenever I'm and whenever I'm talking to women and I talk like this yeah. and I'm aggressive, they're not used to this. Uh, there's a lot of women that completely I, detach from me because they cannot stand I, a guy talking I, like so, this. So, so here's the thing. I, I'm I'm not gonna snitch on them, but I am gonna I am gonna kind of like when Sneeko <laughs> and Myron and they, Fresh yeah. and Zerka when they get off the show, it doesn't matter how mean they are to the girls. Bro, we go to fucking we go to eat sushi afterwards, and I see women. So I'm a Myron. I'm not telling on it, but I, I see women so attracted to Myron afterwards. Yeah. They are so... And you've seen it too. that's what I'm agreeing with. You've seen... The ones that Man, are... I, I, got, I got one story, but I, I'm yeah. not going to no, no. I'm not saying Myron not does... Gonna, I'm Myron not saying Myron does or doesn't no. do anything with him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I have seen women... Myron has been, like, just dog cussed them. And yeah. afterwards, they are following Myron around like a puppy dog. And that's all and I'm, I'm saying. saying it's like you seen, talk mean and they like it. But, like, I've seen Fresh before, like, literally just dog on a girl, and then after... Afterwards, the girl is just following him out of there. Mm -hmm. And then Zerka, holy shit. He'll call them the fucking whores, bro. They're whores. All of you are Have you seen like the video? Like have you seen the video? Situation from Jersey yeah. Shore. Have you yeah. seen the video yeah. where, where he's like, he goes, you know what? I understand what you're saying. I'll, 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 I'll hook up with you later. <laughs> I'll fuck you later. And then have you seen the video? And then he, he fucks her, he her. And she's in the, his in the bed. bed with him, Like, bro. it's in the same <laughs> video. He, like, that night he fucks her. It was so and it's like, it's, like, so crazy. So here's the thing, right? We those guys they go they're way more vile than me right mm -hmm. and they get the girls I'm gonna tell you right now I, I remember watching I was like afterwards Myron was just like on this one chick the whole time and afterwards I saw that girl I was 100% sure now Myron didn't but if he had wanted to that girl would have gone home with it a thousand percent right? and that's all I'm trying to prove right now yeah. is that there is that there is like red pill does it is attractive to women sometimes. I'm not saying it's always a gamma. So it is gamma when most men say it. They're saying it from a gamma perspective. But when some guys say it, like a guy with a lot of experience with women or he's really good at talking, it's a completely different game. Like you can literally teach the women that because they respect you. It's all about respect. If they respect the guy, and I do a lot of tactics, manipulation tactics on my show to make it to where they really like me. I call them beautiful multiple times. Even if they're fat and ugly bitches, I'll, at the very beginning of the show, I'll say, oh, I got a beautiful panel of ladies, blah, blah, blah. I, 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 I so sit there and talk it up. There is a way to do that, but I do that for the guys. I don't care about. Do you remember that one, that big, that large African American woman, very large, saying, "I am a ten. Yeah. I know I'm a ten. I'm on IMDb." And I was like, and I looked at her, and I was like, "You know, we can't do that. I can't say. I can't go up to Luca. And I'm like, a millionaire. I'm like, like I'm playing small yes. forward for the Mavs tonight. Yes. They would kick me out. I can't just say I'm a ten. I feel like my body fat percentage is twelve. Yeah, it's just like, like I'm, do you see this energy that I have? I have a good vibe, so I'm gonna play goalie for the stars tonight. <laughs> like it doesn't work like that for us. And so that's what I said to her. Instead of saying what I really wanted to say, which is you are not attracted. You're fat. You're not like you're not, but you're not attracted to your own demographic. You're not attracted to my demographic. You're not attracted to other women who are lesbian. You're just not physically attractive. No one is going to find you attractive. 
and you saying that you're a 10 and bringing up your IMDb as a cope. I want to say that to her. I do. And I want to say it to her and be compassionate about it. Mm-hmm. But if I say that, bro, I am getting destroyed because yeah. there are 20 other girls in there. But, but what if you have been like, hey, like, just like how what the military my does. What, like, what like, did my girlfriend do? My girlfriend <laughs> called her a 10. My girlfriend <laughs> yeah. called her a 10. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but like, like, you go, girl. Yeah, I just I, I just really feel like that you're, it's all about how you go at it. Like, you can be very manipulative. Just like in the military, I'm pretty sure they do the same thing. You say nice things and then you tear them down after. Like, if you do that, you can teach these women some shit. You can literally, like, I don't, I, I'm really against, like, all this gatekeeping, man, because at the end of the day, I proved my point. Who's, I have, who's gatekeeping? Well, not even y'all. It's just the, everybody in the community. And who's, I'm not. Who's everybody in the community? It's mostly the fans and, like, the smaller, the red pill channels, the smaller red pill channels. Like, who? Like, like, um, definitely fresh and fit, like all their fans. I would say it. they're one of the bigger channels, but, <laughs> but no, so like, uh, so like if I just look at, if I'm looking at, um, like I like some of like, like the black guys in the manosphere, like a lot of them, they don't want women to learn the Such game. As. Like, like Mr. Like I like Mr. Lucario and mm-hmm. like, um, uh, who's the guy that like, he's always talking to, but they're very much about like, don't tell women the game at all. Like never tell women the Play game. The game don't tell them. About yeah, yeah, and like, like women don't want the truth. They don't. Well, they want the. Tr- they say they want the truth, but they don't want full disclosure. Right. Yeah. They don't want to be told that they would rather play the game with you than be told that they are playing a game with you because that shows them that you just get it. That you, the guy, was it a Sterling Cooper? I, I, I always use this quote. I hate to, to do it again, but um, Sterling Cooper said in the past is that a uh, the highest form of pre-selection, the great, the biggest, the best form of pre-selection, being good and bad, is being good and bad. You don't have to talk about it. You're doing it. Ed, d- demonstrate, demonstrate. Do not explicate. Don't say, "Hey, man, I got a really long dick, and I'm really great in bed." No, that sounds like you're fucking popping off, right? But if you're in bed with that woman and you know her body better than she does, she, she knows that you had to have experience with other women in the past so that you could get good at sex, and now she benefits from that. From mm-hmm. that, right now, that's the high, a very high form of well DHV, but also like pre-selection, meaning that women have have rewarded this guy with sex often enough that he's really good in bed, right? Mm-hmm. So those, getting getting to that point, the, the, the problem is you can't explain that, say, I'm, I'm hi, I'm Sterling like Cooper, male porn star, but oh, I'm really good in bed and I've got a big dick, oh, would you like to have big? <laughs> no, no man has ever reasoned. <laughs> Ever, Could you see Sterling say that shit? What he you know, uh, Sterling going, yeah, I, Sterling. I have a big neck. Uh, hello, mate. Hello, hello mate. Hey, mate. I got a big schlong. Yeah. <laughs> That's, gotta, uh, we got to get him back here. Um, but if he were to, like, he would, that would never happen. Right? Yeah. Because he's not going to tell the woman about, like, here's how I'm, baby, here's what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to, got a list of, of this stuff. And yeah, so I, I hope the, guys never so do that. So what that is, is that's explaining rather than demonstrating. So, and that, that applies to a lot of different things. But the, 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 the long and the short of it is that no man has ever reasoned a woman into bed. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because. I mean, prostitutes. Yeah, yes. well, okay, well, yeah. Prostitutes. Oh, but that's yes. transactional. But so no, porn no, stars. no yes. man has ever reasoned, like saying, here's, here, here's, my, here's, my, here's, here's my resume of, of what I've done in the past and, and you know, my, my pedigree and my bona fides here. Baby, uh, strip down, it's time to go fuck, right? That, that doesn't happen. Even though, like, even logically, we think, you know, why would she want to get with a fucking John Circa of all people? He's a piece of shit. Why doesn't she want to get with me? I make more money than him. I'm better looking than him. I have, I have come from a good family. I hit checked out all the fucking lists. I like dogs. I like going to Disneyland. I like fucking rainbows. I like all of this stuff. And he's just, he just goes in there, you know, does a lot of coke and Adderall and gets talks shit. And he's fucking the chicks that I want to fuck. That, so what do we say? Those women must be damaged. There must be something very, very wrong with them. No, they're women who are responding to an opportunity to fuck a six foot four, six foot five yeah. John Zerka, right? Because it's an opportunity. Hypergamy can't miss that kind. I can't afford to miss that kind of opportunity. And so you're going to see that their behaviors are going to belie what their real motivations are. So you can come down with the most rational list of all the way, all the reasons why you should. Uh, this woman should marry you. Uh, you're a good catch. Here, I don't understand why why you would do this. The very fact that you said I don't, you're making the list in the first place, and you don't understand that yeah. that disqualifies. Here, you're let disqualified me for let me make something clear about the whole gamma and explain red pill stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, from my perspective as a guy that's on a show that 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 is teaching women red pill and stuff, 
I'm saying I could do it. I would never tell a guy that I'm coaching to go talk to their woman about red pill. That is extremely gay. I would, I don't even talk to my own girl about red pill. No. So like, I definitely, I'm not sitting here telling all guys to do it, but what I'm saying is that, but even you proved it, you know, with the Myron thing there guys with shows that do this stuff, you can put Riz behind it. A girl can be into you because it's not always gamma males. All I'm saying is that a guy can be alpha as fuck and explain this stuff and he will get even more bitches for explaining it. Now, he if he's a normal to, guy he though, still has to speak their language. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think, I think, I think he can be interesting and talk about anything. Like I have yeah. absolutely pulled girls because I talk about astronomy, quantum mechanics and atomic physics. It's totally over their head, but because I sound like I know what I'm talking about. Like it's right. Like, it's, it can it's, be yeah, attractive. Yeah, yeah, the, I, I, I know this is a fact one, because I've experienced one. it. I cannot I know tell you true. how many women are interested with the way I describe my sales funnel. That is so boring. But like, if you're like, <laughs> well, we did this and we turned the ROI out. We did $168,000 last week. And all of a sudden they're like, okay, I want to listen. What well, if money's being made. They want to yeah, hear about sure. it. Especially yeah, your listen, fucking friends, you can, bro. You can make... You can make anything interesting. I, I don't think that's the issue. But like, you, there are two different things we're talking about. You're trying to help women, not trying to sleep with women. Uh, and so, because of that, like, to me, it's like if they want to ask me, oh, you know, I don't know if you guys, you know, Katie Moore. Mm -hmm. Katie Moore is a good friend of mine. She's on my show all the time. And Katie will come to me for advice, and I'll give her advice, and it's good advice. And she says, "This is really great advice." And they'll be like, "See you in a week when you don't listen to any fucking thing I say and go right back to the same dude." And then you're just upset. And it's just always the same thing. Sometimes it's not prescription. It's just describing or explain to them. Because usually the girls come on they're like, why is this guy not taking me seriously? Why is this happening? Why is this? Because they're getting digmatized. They're sleeping <laughs> around. Like there's something going on that they're doing wrong. And they're like... And they're like, okay, why do guys do this? And it's like, oh, it's because you're chat chasing. You're alpha widow. You're this. Like they, like, and the thing is, when you teach them these they things, they and they, change. and that, well, you're right. I would say ninety percent of women don't fucking change, but there is definitely some bro that change. And I've had multiple girls come back five, six times. I've had two girls get married now, get proposed to now. Okay, so there's definitely things that I'm doing that are helping them because it's it's working. I, I will point this out. I I have like twenty girls now that have been proposed to. Because, oh yeah, because, because you've been doing because, this for years, no, bro. Because because they did my bikini competition. <laughs> and they got in, in outrageously good shape. And they got there. Dude, I'll tell you this. This is a complete not, uh, mm. side note here. But you'll see the girls who finish in the top 10 in the bikini competition, mm. a half of them will get proposed to. Because yeah. the guys will look at them and be like, I'm not doing better than this. Those guys are such simp beta cucks. No, 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 like, on, no, but like. No, but what? Because they're in a bikini competition? But, dude, Maybe. because any guy that I'm telling you, guys who choose those type of girls, not saying you specifically because you have a choice of a hundred different women. Bro, there's no you way are, you can come to Swimsuit USA and tell me none of those girls are married. I don't, I don't, dude. So the, you're, you're, the, the entire, I want a girl who wants validation, I don't want, bro, because every, I want every, her to only want every, my validation. Every, every human wants The reason validation. why your wife loves you so fucking much is because I guarantee you she does not yearn for the validation of any yeah, other but, fucking But at some man. point, she probably did. She probably A long time ago, 27 years ago. Back in the day. That was, yeah, yeah, before 27 years ago. But the reason why your marriage is so good is because she pines for your validation, mm -hmm. okay? It mean and I want to find, I want to find a girl that is in the same situation. So I you're know basically there's a looking, formula. You're, are you like frustrated because you need to find a unicorn? I've already platform? found it and I have a, I have a formula for any guy to find it. I, that's the, that's my what, whole Tell point. me what your formula Seriously. is. Seriously. It's yeah. the place, it's, it's all about, it's all outer game. It's where to go. Most guys have no outer fucking game. They don't know when, where, and how. And mm -hmm. that's all it is. It's just going when and where and, 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 and that's it. Where, okay, let's Once start. again, I'm not gonna give out my start. secret. I'm gonna give out. Oh, hey guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a trade. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a test soon. No, hold on. I'm gonna, guys, for my mentorship, I'm gonna have a test soon for y'all. If y'all go through the whole test, you get my secret at the end of it. Okay. But yeah, I'm gonna have that yeah, soon me, for y'all. Let me just give you a piece of advice. Right? You, want, you wanted to know why I, uh, I endorse MOA because this is not a fucking trade. So, so, here's the thing. so for me, the it's not a secret, bro. So Chat could figure it out. She's like, Chat, go ahead and put it in. It's not a trade secret, but I'm not gonna say it. All right. So, so, so for me, you know, it's like charity events. It's like the main place where I have guys meet girls like most of all yeah. most of my guy friends meet their girlfriends through me so but the thing for me and I'll just give you a piece of advice being that I've been doing this for you know two and a half years and we've cleared like eight million dollars at this point is that I give away everything for free but there's so much that you get from me as far as one-on-ones that you can't replace me does that make sense yeah. my course is so long and I give away a free course and I do free calls. I do 16 hours of content every week or 11 hours of content every week. And the stuff we do with him, there's no way to re replicate that. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're the thing that's not replicatable. Whatever the place is, honestly, if you want to sell more units, you should tell people what the place is. And it should, be in your, it should be in your free school server or your Discord oh, server. Oh yeah, I, I know I got to give out much free sauce as well. I want to make a test where I can there, gather more no, information there's, there's about no the people and then I There's no that. single thing in MOA I won't give away, but the whole course, 
because the course, uh, the whole course is 114 modules long, it doesn't matter what I give away, and you also don't get access to me. I'm mostly doing it because a lot of people don't know who the fuck I am. A lot of people have no idea who the fuck I am, who watch all this stuff. They have no idea what I'm talking about, and whenever I say that I got a secret that nobody else got, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna spray it out because nobody's talking about it. There's not one other fucking person oh, in space that talks about it. And you're not talking it. about it either. Well, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not <laughs> going to because that is the one thing that separates me from everybody else. And I'm going to hold on to that as long as I can. Right, so like I said, I guarantee you they're going to put it in chat. Right. Everybody go put it in. I'm, Anybody who's caught through my gonna, shit. I'm going to give away a trade secret. Ready? Okay. You want to mass text a bunch of girls to come to a party. What happens is after the first 50, uh, IG starts to throttle you. Yeah. You, know, you know how this oh, works? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The probably. way you get her around the throttle, do you know what you do? You go to the first picture yeah. on her profile, you send her her own picture. And then delete it. Yeah. No, no, you send her her own picture with the message, and then you delete the picture. It gets it gets past the IG uh, throttle. Yeah. There you go. There's some free game right there I yeah. just gave you. Uh, I mean, I incredible. I mean, you can invite hundreds and thousands. You, you, have just, you now have an advantage over every single club promoter in your Men, city don't because of what I just told you. don't fucking listen to him. Don't message a thousand girls. You're going to hate your life afterwards. No, the message so, so, 5,000 girls. Go, go in real life and go talk to a thousand see, girls, guys. Let me see if I, I can question. square this away. What? Go ahead. Talk, what? Question. Go ahead. We haven't heard yet. We got to get super chats. Yeah. We haven't heard yet a solid argument without any, like, they said there's statistics or some facts. We haven't seen any facts yet. I got a good one, actually, for us. Um, so what is the percentage of men that end up having kids? Uh, it's 40, 40%. That? Hey, are uh, you sure? Can you look at my super chats also? Yeah. Okay. Um. I got one. I got one ten dollars super chat. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I got all nine of them. I got nine super chat. Beautiful, right beautiful. Uh, the, historically, it's forty percent of men. No, we're not. I'm not talking historically. I'm talking about right now. What is the what is the percentage of men that that have a child right now? The the total percentage. Oh, is it somewhere in the sixty percent? Something like that. Sixty-two, I think it is. Somewhere uh, around there, we do uh, that. We remember the the U, the U. Uh, Seventy-six percent among women and men. Oh no, that's forty to forty-nine. I can tell you, I can tell you the percent, the ratio of women to men who reproduce. We need to, we need to remember more women that. reproduce well, than men. Yeah, we yeah. need, we need to do, we need to look up that uh, it's IMF study. Of men it's super overall. family study. That I have, uh, uh, the, the, no, if the, you look the, at the, the actual numbers, you, it is sixty-two percent. The, the actual number for yeah. right now, this is, and I am getting this from CDC. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. This is from CDC. It's sixty percent. So a majority of men have kids. Yeah. Okay. So if a majority of men have kids today, mm -hmm. we need to start focusing on giving prescriptions and giving out things to help them that are going to help them become better fathers. Because most men, more than fifty percent, are going to probably have a kid of sixty-two percent right now. Okay. Sure. So, Great. What so because that, of that, what would that be? How would we help them? By actually focusing on building families, because we look at a lot of the red pill space, it's a lot of you shouldn't get married, focusing you shouldn't get into by, relationships. So by, the biggest what thing, would you improve? Here, I'll, I'll give you an example. About the family the re structure that would help men be better fathers. It's not about that part. I got to take it back one step, okay? okay. So it, it all goes back to just starting and just doing something. I'm not even saying what the prescriptions are, what we should be telling the men. I'm just saying nobody's even doing this. So you basically want a pep rally for guys who are uh, no, no. who are fathers who are out of the, the family. No, 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 no. I, I want to give a pep rally for guys who want relationships. The reason why I named my show Purple Pod isn't because I want to be the middle of red and blue. It's because I really love AMS. And AMS talks about, yeah, I know, weird, huh? No, no, I like I, AMS. Yeah, I love AMS. And the reason, and AMS always talks about Purple Pill. If you type in Purple Pill AMS, he has tons of videos talking about how to be good in a relationship. You know, how, because he calls Purple Pill a red pill person that is in a relationship. So my whole point, point of my show is, women, y'all need to get, um, y'all need to get in relationships. Men, we need to get in relationships because if we get in relationships, we can beat the powers that be because they want a single. If we're, the, all the all the algorithms or the powers that be just the one percent even i would even consider people like fresh and fit want a single because they're going to make more money the more men are single so you would say that fresh and fit are the one percent i'm saying any guy yeah are, are they in the top one percent incomes does it matter if it's incomes? I yes, I'm just saying that the but, powers that be yeah, want us when to I, be when I talk single about, but like are, does, I'm that, not like, does nick, that mean I'm like not the nick people Fuentes, are like man. so is it in like Economics? Look, 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 like, look what, what? let me explain to you. I'm not Nick Fuentes, man. When I say 1%, I'm not just talking about like the Jews or anything. I'm saying just the top 1%, the people who make the most money, okay? Greed greed is the same across all boards. I just see it all as greed. And the bottom line is there's way more money made off people being single than getting into a relationship. Because when you get in a relationship, you're putting more money in your 401k, your IRA, your HSA. You're going to buy a house. You're going to uh, put most of your money into these things that are focused on your future because you're going to have kids and generational wealth. Single people spend in the moment. They live in the moment they go on like they, they go and do stuff that's going to make us especially single women you they're going to buy realize makeup. that statistically speaking homosexuals have more disposable income than, than uh, couples who have children yeah but yeah but all, they spend that, but more money and they re, they put that, it back that, into that's the a economy. straw man that, that's a straw man man but i'm not i'm not man. because i'm not talking about that like we're talking about something else and what i'm saying is that that like this is 
This is what I'm talking about. Like, if guys get in relationships, Mm -hmm. if we all get in relationships, if men and women get in relationships, they make less money. When I say they, just the richest people. That's the top 1%. Because there's more money being made off keeping us separate than there is is us um, being together. So if I teach everybody to get into relationships and actually how to be good in a relationship, we can beat the powers that be. We can be pushed back. But yet, here's but to more to the point, whenever I'm listening to somebody say, like, uh, Ben Shapiro just this morning, as a matter of fact, well, saying like you know, men need to man up and, and be the best version of themselves because we need more men to be, excuse me, more suitable husbands, better eligible bachelors for women. So essentially, what what Ben Shapiro was saying and still has, and many you know many other tradcons say, is that we need to be the best versions of ourselves because we need to solve women's problems. No, we just the need relationships. That they're suffering from right now is that they cannot find suitable suitable mates. And the problem that they will never really address is the fact that women have become the men that they want to marry, yeah. right? And so the only guys who that they want to marry, who they want to settle down with, that they want to have families with, are the guys who are elite men, guys who are above average. Mm-hmm. And as you probably heard, you know, average women don't want to get with average men because they don't have to. They don't have to do that anymore. So you can say it's all it's the it's the corporate elites or whatever else. Again, no one ever wants to tell me who those people are, and I don't mean like I don't mean the the Jews or anything like oh, that. Wait, hey, just, but most Jewish know, people are not in the top well, one no, percent. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, yeah. I mean, that's a good I, point. I, I, okay, okay, number two, there like, are only fourteen million Jews on the planet. Just that why. <laughs> See, here's the thing: is is we get to what we're gonna do super chats after this. Okay, but question is, how are you gonna Men get better, but it doesn't stop women from divorcing them. So, what's your solu- your solution? Is, is there marriage reform? Like, what's yeah, like, the? Are you, trying, are you pushing for marriage reform? No, or are I'm you just push for you know equal rights and, and child support custody. No, no, like, it's just so making they, people better in general. If people get better about, you gotta understand, everybody that is stuck single, bro, they are stuck single because they fucking suck. Okay, the reason why people are stuck single is because they suck. Their so inner game is marriage, fucked up. How does marriage fix the problem? I'm not saying that marriage, I'm not, I don't push marriage, you know that. I do not push marriage on anybody. I push relationships. I do not push marriage. I do not push anybody into getting married, okay? I've never have said that on my fucking show. There's a lot of great single dads out there that are not in the home. And Rolo, you pulled the statistic yeah. out. Uh, the best, the fathers are what, single black dads? Yeah, that, that, that's, yeah. well, so that's that's the whole thing. That's why he's getting to the marriage thing here. Is, and I've done, I've done the, the shows actually with Myron on this. Is the idea that uh, marriage is like a marriage contract, marriage certificate, is the litmus test for whether you or not there is an evolved father in that in the household, is a 20th century idea, ideal, right? It's like that's the only way that we measure those. So when we say like uh, children are fatherless or whatever, they're saying they're fatherless. They still have fathers. They might have evolved fathers, but it means that the father is not married to the wife or, or to the mother of the child, right? Yeah. So therefore, we say well. There's the trouble in the United States is that it's fatherlessness. No, it's not. They are still, like more than ever, especially in the black communities, um, you'll see more and more involvement on the part of black fathers right now, statistically speaking, like at, at higher than any other time in history right now. It's just that those men are not married to the mothers of those children. So do we say that the, they, they're lacking a father? The only time we have a problem with a child not having a father is when that child is a criminal or has a drug, has attempts suicide, or there's some sort of social, you know, antisocial behavior from that child. First thing we say is, oh, must have been that fucked up single mother that he had. No, we say it's got to be the dad. Where's the father? Where's the dad in all of this? And we're going to put, we're going to foist that responsibility back on that father. Now, the problem that you're always going to run into, whether you want to have a pep rally for guys or you have some sort of concrete plan, is that you will never be able to affect any of that until you can reinstate male authority. And until that happens, everything is just a fart and, and a fucking And that's what I right do now. on my show though. I teach them the different, they, just like Dr. David Buss talks about, like the long-term dating strategies being different. And I explain to them, you can end up with a top 10% guy. He's an alpha. I give the same prescription as what Myron says. You know, if you're going to sleep with him fast, you need to also, you know, uh, provide value in some way with his business, in his life somehow. And you can maybe lock down that alpha. Maybe if you're that girl and you and you do everything right. Um, so, like, I explain to them, you could do that or you could do the what most women do. And they go into a relationship where it's in their frame and they have control. And that's the best, that's the best long-term strategy for her to have a beta provider and a guy that's going to be there in the long term. 
um, not run away after the kid's born and stuff like that. And I explain both of them. I say, look, weigh your options. You can either go for the 90% guy or the 80% guy. That's normal. And you're going to have the frame and, you know, it's going to be all how you want it. Or you can keep chat chasing. You can keep fucking getting digmatized. And then you could try to fix those guys. You, but okay, just giving so them those two the solutions. Thing, one of the things you said, and we'll get to Super Share in a second. Um, one of the things you were saying is like, you know, you, you want to encourage guys to be the best versions of themselves. Everyone from Rich Cooper to, you know, Ty Lopez to, yeah, fucking, to you know, uh, Tony Robbins to Gary V to PVD to everybody else. Everybody says exactly the same fucking thing. And you know what they don't have? They don't have any concrete plan. They don't want to talk about it. They want to have a pep rally. And that's why I called it a pep rally, because it's just success porn. It's just motivational fucking posters on the fucking wall with no. So if I no give them a prescription, if I give them a prescription of where to go find girls that aren't fucked up yet, then am I not doing? Then well, I'm doing then, it right. Then, then. You, then you I'm not doing you, a pepper alley. Then I'm the telling the them where to go. You know where the fucking magical city of I do. I is fucking like, do. <laughs> I fucking do, man. The, the thing is, uh, let me get back to the fuck girl tier list, okay? Because we were talking about that. The the girls at the A tier are the fuck girls. The reason why I'm saying tier list is because in the gaming world, there's S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier. Mm -hmm. At the S tier, that's the most hardcore character, the best in the game so like the girls with only fans the girls with a hundred thousand followers on instagram the girls that um you know Ali just Myers. get so much validation <laughs> they're at the top of the fuck girl tier list okay and in my opinion i would never fuck with those girls on relationship level that's just me personally that's why i teach guys under that like say you realize eight, that sounds like sour so, grapes right? yeah yeah so like eight what about, what about three of them at the same time oh yeah right? I, yeah yeah that's okay for just sex why not it's always okay for just sex why, why, always okay for just sex no let Why me explain. wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I'm about to explain. I got. I got to explain like the whole thing. So S tier would say strippers, okay, or A tier. A tier would be strippers, okay. Would never want to date one of those girls. Too much validation. Too much money coming in. Sure. Wouldn't want to do it. Okay. Right under that, bottle girls at a club. Bottle girls. Girls by, that are bartenders date, at the you club. You mean like have a monogamous relationship? Yes. Have no. I'm talking about take serious, and you might be a wife one day. Like you're you're a girl that I actually want to lock down and be in a relationship with for mm, a okay. long period of time, okay? okay. All right. Because trust me, I would fuck all these girls, bro. I'll fuck all of them. I don't be. I would never be in a relationship with one. But so like. And then right at the bottom of the tier list is the C tier. And all these girls, the, the S tier, the A tier, and the B tier, they all started somewhere. Almost all of them, I would say a majority, 50, 60, 70% of them usually start at a certain place. And if everybody uses their fucking critical thinking, they'll figure it out in two seconds. They usually have a job that they start out where they first get to show off their beauty and where they first get to get that type of validation. And you can get that girl right when she's out of her first relationship, right when she's out of her second relationship, out of high school. So you I can get them before their fucking secret place. It's Hooters. Yes, he yes, got it. Best, it's go. restaurants. It's just restaurants in general. Hooters. All of them. Guys, all, all of them. <laughs> really? Yeah, Hooters. yeah, 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 yeah. You sit at the bar and you sit there and you and you become friends with the bar. Hey, man, it's not wrong. That's what Maya was. Maya started in Hooters. See, there no, I'm, I'm not wrong. I know I'm not wrong Kylie, because I know Kylie, tons of girls like Kylie your friends. Kylie was at fucking Twin Peaks. Guys, exactly. The, the, exactly. The, the, and you can get them before yeah. they get fucked up. You can meet them and you can get them before they end up going through the Magic City of Eldorado. Hooters. <laughs> Bro, it is. And you know how many guys sit there and waste their time going to all the going on dating apps and going to clubs and getting these girls once they're 25 plus and they've been ran through? That's so ignorant, man. Everybody can have one of these girls. Hooters is nursery school for strippers. <laughs> all right. Uh, hey, Glenn, Glenn, give me the super chats right quick and then we'll bring the gal in for half a second. Hilarious. Yeah. All right. Hoopers, here we go. Hey, baby, we're going to Hooters later. We're going to go. Go to Hooters! Hooters. Daddy, Everybody. I got a new job at the restaurant. Where? Right, uh, Hooters. Hey, my, my, my hey if y'all want to go filter through all the ugly girls on fucking, on fucking dating apps, y'all, and all the fucking girls at the club... Go for it, man. Y'all want to filter them? I will filter young, beautiful women that haven't been ran through yet all day long. Y'all can do that. Well, yeah, I can't see them. You, I can see them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and How many times will Rolo use the word douche nozzle in this stream? Douche I only use it once. One Thank time. you, man. Yeah, if, you, if you said once, you win the $10 from your friends. All right. Rolo makes me feel so good. I want to rock and roll and have my woman with... Ass with... With... Uh, snow coke. With a snowflake? Oh, uh, okay. he wants to do coke off our ass. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Oh, thank you. Must be first All right. Coke. Thank you, Nikki Six. Oh. Next, uh, next one. Uh, Rollo, thoughts on women who give a give sex. Sex. Say sex. Uh, can you you can spell sex, dog? I know. I know how. To, I know what sex is, dude. Expecting provisions, relationships, uh, and when they don't, they uh, the harm they can cause. Okay. What you? 
Thoughts on women who give sex. Oh, I, I know what you're saying. So, so like you, you end up. So it's you, transactional. You have sex early on, and then immediately she wants things from you, and they can cause harm. I mean, of course. So you saw like maybe like a essay, you know, if accusation. The chick, if the chick is having sex with you to get something out of it, you're having transactional sex in the first place. Uh, let, let me say something real quick. Film everything. Screenshot everything. That's what I would tell you. Like the, those people. I don't mean have a camera in your bedroom that, that you know you can, that that may be crossing the line, but like like I would have cameras of her. Uh, uh, agreeably walking into your apartment, having a good time, walking out, give, give her a little hug and a kiss on the way out, text messages where you're like, hey, let's meet up again, screenshot those text messages. Yeah. So if all of a sudden she wants to change document the narrative, everything. document everything. Number one, stop snitching on yourself. Number two, film and screenshot everything. You have to be a lawyer. You have to be litigious about yeah. your, your sex life. Okay, what's the next one? Email chain. <laughs> Every head must... Puss bow and every tongue must confess. Rolo will be a legend for waking up men. Uh, waking up the men. Okay, so for the dude in white, you don't. Uh, that's Sergio. So let's thank you very much. Use his proper name. Uh, you don't like his info because you don't want other men to win. I don't know if I can disagree. Uh, yeah, I don't know about he, that. It's just. It's like it, okay. So whenever I just to you know I should probably clarify this in the beginning is that whenever we have like discussion I don't like this isn't a debate this is just two guys fucking disagreeing over something we could have done this at the bar a, a real <laughs> for, a real formalized debate is like something you would see on the senate floor right yeah okay it's timed all that stuff so if you're if you anybody who's ever been to like knows classic debate has ever taken like debate uh, team is on debate team in college or whatever you know that this is not debate this Shut is out bullshit to my yeah dude okay. we could have done this at the bar so so that's number one. Number two is this: is that the red pill is still a process. You fucking, t you at least took up the fucking gauntlet, which is more than I can say for the rest of these sons of bitches <laughs> who want to say. I, I say, you know, if you have a problem with me coming, at least you had the balls. You're the second person, by the way. It was uh, Gary, the numbers guy. It was the our, our initial guy who yeah. said, "I'll come down there and I'll debate fucking numerology and astrology with you." And we're like, you know what? That's the that's the that offers on the table for anybody, by the way. And so you're the second person of have been saying this since October, but as far as like the red Red pill is concerned. It's still a process. It's a praxeology. It's not written in fucking pen and on some holy tablet brought down from Mount Sinai. It is written in pencil, and I still use an eraser when something I says. That actually that brings up one of my so. biggest points that I want to bring up with you is that I, you know, if it is a praxeology, I'm all about science, bro. I love how mm -hmm. science works. I'm very emergent. I hate static. I'm totally against being static in reality. Mm -hmm. You got to be emergent. The universe is emergent. Nature is emergent. You got to stick with it. And the thing is. If that was true, what I would expect from you is a book next year titled uh, The Rational Male Volume 1. And in that Volume 1, it's all the changes for this year. And then two, three, five years later, Volume 2 comes out. So you want the DSM for... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And well, it's just the thing is we know it's going to change. We know that, it, that as time goes on, there's certain things that might need to be taken out and there's certain things that might need to be added in. And that's all. Like, I, I love the idea of it being a praxeology and stuff. I told this to Glenn months ago. I was like, I wish he... He had a volume that came out, you know, every year, five years or something. Sorry, but yeah. Give me the next one. Do it. You don't talk red pill with women. Women are going to. Do, oh, thanks for that, Carl. Um, are going to do they? Women they are they going to do, to do they? To do them. Guys, one more time. Grammarly.com. Copy and paste your message <laughs> into <laughs> Grammarly.com. <laughs> it will tell you when you don't have, you don't conjugate your verbs. I don't know how this keeps happening. I like it. I want, uh, want it to create the observe effect. Uh, hypergamy doesn't reason. Women want value. Guys, write write your messages out either on your me IG, your messenger or on uh, your notepad, and then copy and paste it into YouTube. Next this is one. getting crazy. I can, we can't read anything you guys Rolo are writing. Always sticks to the facts. Thank you, uh, Sergio Salcido. Okay, next one. How many of these do I got? Oh, excuse me. Uh, purple pill is the future of the red pill. Guys want. Excuse me. To get laid now, but they want to have families at some point in their life. That's my That's favorite right. quote by AMS. Is he always says, "We all go purple pill in the end." That's why I started my show okay. is because I so, know we're all going to end up in relationships so one let me, day. Let me explain so that's my you, show. Let me explain to you what the purple pill really is in like my parlance because I was right. In fact, I probably wrote this essay long before AMS even came on the scene. The purple pill was always this combination of a guy who became red pill aware. He's like, you know what? Rollo's right. Fucking hey, I can't believe this. He went through the stages of unplugging. He becomes red pill aware. He puts the red pill lens on and he can't take the fucking lens off. But the problem is, is that guy still subscribes to all of his blue pill hopes and dreams and ideals 
that he still thinks he can get with red pill awareness. And the problem with that is, is he's not quite entirely become red pill per se and living in a red pill paradigm. He still understands this stuff. And I'll see this, by the way, in a lot of religious guys. They'll want to pick and pull parts of the red pill that, yeah, fits, the religious with, ones, that, that yeah. fits with their convictions because they're still trying to apply all this new data to old ideals and mm -hmm. old goals that were based on the same bullshit that they are now emancipated from and yet they're still trying to go back and get those get the ideals that were were sold to them while they were still sort of stuck in the matrix stuck in the blue pill right and that's when we call them purple pill because so would you consider me to, red or purple i like just I, I, because I, honestly, you don't I, honestly I don't know enough about you to really say one way or the other but i will say this a person because torsha said i'm one of the most red pill people so like she, would, even torsha said that i was you're purple as fuck don't no, i'm red don't, i'm red I, I got more of a red pill life than most of these fucking guys in this chat bro right, hands down right, right. i got one of the most red pill relationships that most people could ever have okay. like a very submissive would, girl young beautiful y'all would tori be at that high level or she'd be the stripper level like, oh. Which one would she be? She would, she would probably be. Would she be a, is she, she a quality she, woman, but she kind of like looks like she, that age because of her followers. Never have anything. It's to not. Do it's with. not. It's not looks. It's not looks. It's her. It's her validation, bro. It's amount of the That's amount true. of validation that comes in. So she has like I think she has like twenty seven thousand followers. She would probably be like a B or A tier to me. Because there's a lot of women that like have that in that same tier. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to uh, uh, Torch's uh, breast implants. Yes. Shout shout out. Out. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's just validation. I'm not trying to fight for validation. Uh, okay. Well, either way, uh, what I would say is this. I mean, well, first of all, I would not use Tory Grow as a benchmark for any of this. But the idea of the guy who's still stuck in his blue pill hopes and dreams, and now he thinks he has this new like data set or he's got this new information, he's going to go, you know what? Rather than just abandon all that bullshit, I'm going to go back to the blue. I'm going to pull out Cypher. I'm going to plug myself back into the matrix, and I'm going to see if I can use all this great new red pill stuff and get those, get the things that I really thought were valuable when I was still like plugged into the to the matrix. That's, you know, all, I want the a white picket fence. I want well, my wife to 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 be a wife. I want to, you know the golden retriever in the front yard and you know 2.5 kids, and I can go have that that blue pill nuclear family dream. But the problem is, is that when you put once you put the red pill lens on there ain't no going back what, what, what have i said that is purple again. or blue just from now because yeah you haven't probably watched my show or anything but just well, from our conversation what has been considered yeah, blue I, or purple okay, so the, the so first off i would say that you're probably very invested in your girlfriend right now and so a lot of this stuff is probably being der is derivative of the fact that you want to qualify to the fact that you're now move and, and not just you there's a lot of guys that do exactly yeah. the same thing is they'll say okay rollo thanks for the red pill i got all this stuff i found my dream girl if i can roll i fucking wrote, i just learned I about I, I was with her saying, three years ago. I'm not ago, saying bro. this is this is you particularly, but I, I, I see similarities, anyways. Guys will will become red pill. They'll read my stuff. They'll they'll maybe they'll you know practice game for a little while to the point where they find the girl who is their sort of their genetic celebrity, the girl that it looks like the girl of their dreams, and I finally have enough game because they have enough red pill knowledge to get that girl, and they're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm out. I, I I've learned enough. See you later, Rolo. Bye bye. And then either they get rolled by that girl and they come back, or else they do what a lot of other guys are doing, particularly if they make their vocation about the red pill, and now they can no longer float that vocation or the their revenue stream or all the stuff that they were talking about before. Mm -hmm. And so now they either have to like throw shit at the red pill, or they have to sort of reinvent it mm -hmm. and make it into make the red pill into something that fits where they're going, their new pivot. So I finally was able to get this girl that I really settled down with, but I can't be uh, Tucker Max anymore. I can't be that guy anymore who I used to be. Yeah. So, re but that's where my money came see, from. See, but she wouldn't have had anything to do with me if I didn't have the revenue from being the incorrigible bad boy and wrote all these books about it. And now I have to be suddenly turned into the responsible adult, the good dad, the good husband, the good church goer, whatever it is, the good, you know, the guy who's got his business down on point. And you know what? That guy's fucking boring. That guy's market share drops off a fucking cliff. That guy doesn't get asked back to fucking fresh and fit. Or when you because, when you propose, yeah. Because well, because now what he's trying to do is he's trying to force fit the red pill to fit his blue pill ideals, which was marriage and monogamy and everything in the first place. I got. What do we got? I got to explain something though, really quick, man. Like, like that's that, but that's not my life. Like, like, like the problem is, is that when I got into this space, it was because I had a red. I got into this because Fresh and Fit came to Dallas for a Fresh and Fit meet, and they had a big Discord of guys in there. Okay, I joined a Discord. I didn't end up going to meet, but I talked with all of these guys, and I became good friends with them. What I found was 
I had the most red pill life of any of them. I had a submissive girl that I took care of and she did everything at the house like a good, like what every guy wants in the red pill. I had that. I had a beautiful young woman, okay? And most guys that it was in this space, they were all fucking not getting girls. On top of that, they were broke. They weren't business owners. They didn't have anything going for them in life. And when I joined this Discord, I was the only guy that was successful, had a good successful relationship, actually like was good in business, made money, wasn't it like I was actually one of the guys that was doing it, life and correctly. Call, and they would call you blue pill just for your investment. Well, deal. this is what happened. I converted most of them to be on my side. There's a huge drama between Fresh and Fit and me only because like there's a couple guys that stuck with them and then the rest of the group all came with me and they all supported what I'm doing because they understand that I'm they, very rich. They're still very invested in their blue. Pill Most of them are not in relationships, Rolo. Like the thing but is, would a they lot of these like to be in relationships. Would they prefer to be in a monogamous relationship rather than spinning plates? It's not. No, I actually, I Mike, like my, like my homie, like my biggest sales guy. Like, no, he doesn't. He's gonna stay single for a while because that's what he wants to do. I don't sit there and pressure guys mm. that want to stay single to gain relationships. I don't. I, there's no sense in doing that. The problem is that there's 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 people that um. I don't know how to explain this now. Hmm. I don't know. All right, look, yeah, next one. Go, yeah, go, go. go. We got to wrap this up. Go. The average oh, girl. the average girl or normal girl, 5'4", 175 pounds, no tattoos, no kids, no plastic surgery, makes 30 uh, to 50K in the United States standard. Yeah, that's what happens when you know, walk around so in like, public. I read though. an article about that. It was like 170 pounds, and she's like 5'4". It's yeah. like a beach ball. Um, uh, shout out to Sergio from Purple Pill Podcast. Where do you see the manosphere going in the next 10 years? Yeah, he's not asking me. He's asking uh, this is obvious. Asking you, we are you. all going to be subservient to John Zerka. How do we not? How it's do you not obvious. do Zerka? Hey, when Zerka, John, Zerka. We're literally, we're going to be a political Zerka movement. Vision. And what's going to happen is we're going to have like the senator, the, uh, the, uh, the, the House Select uh, Committee on Intelligence, and they're going to interview John Zerka, and he's going to be anyone who disagrees with him. He's going to call him a homosexual. I don't know about the I, like I don't know about ten years, but I can tell you five years. What's going to happen? We're already there. Uh, the uh, if officially the manosphere is unrecognizable. Uh, second of all, we are uh, in a political like uh, election cycle right now. Like I said, we would be, and everybody who uh, made a handsome profit off of the manosphere is now pivoting to social issues and the culture war. And they will continue to do that until, until this, well, what, November of 2024. And then right around springtime of 2025, you'll see all these sons of bitches come back. And now they want to have that want to be the next fresh and fit. And they want to start talking about intersexual dynamics because that will always have some sort of shelf life. Because it doesn't matter if you're divorced, single, young, old, uh, getting sex, virgin, not virgin, asexual, whatever. Everybody wants to talk about their fucking sex lives. It will always be popular and there will always be an audience for it. It will change, but everybody's going to go through this cycle where they'll go and talk about something else because that's where the money is. And then the grifters and the hacks will once again come back into the manosphere probably mid-2025. That's where I see it going. Um, those percentages of men with children are skewed because it includes all generations. Boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. We should uh, be observing Gen Y and Gen Z. That's the, when the numbers get thrown off. True. 30%. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, Michael, please get better audio equipment. Oh, uh, sure, I'll, I'll get right on that. We're working on it, yeah. I'll get right yeah, on that. We just, right. we just said we're going to have to pass by. Oh, they'll be back the in the fuck you coming now. at me? Oh, you can show the fucked up yeah. one, bro. I like it when people talk shit to me. Uh, Neil Strauss went from single to married. Yeah, and then back to divorced again, by the way. Uh, keep going. Uh, come on, Mike and Rolo. You guys know Sergio is fraudulent. Look how he brags. Look at his posture. And how he carries himself. Look how he dresses. No swag, no or charisma, <laughs> or probably can't fight either. I don't know, man. Bitch, pull up and the guys, fight. The pull guy, up, bitch. The guys pull that, the fuck the guys up, and I'll take your fucking bitch too, the guys man. Guys that the fuck don't up. look like they can fight, but they're kind of like wiry and like they've been like lifting. Hey, you don't fuck with. They've been working in the guys. fields for a long time. Those are the guys you don't fuck with. You don't fuck with. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah this fight. is all fake. I can't even bench press 135 pounds. It's all fake. It's all fake. Yes, yeah, so you just take a pill and muscles magically grow That's off your arms. He ain't no idea what the fuck he's talking about. He ain't no, he no idea. I'm like, okay, should I say it in that vernacular? No, no, don't say it. Uh, guys, like, guys like him are not average dudes working at these those jobs or going there and picking up women and keeping them. You mean at Hooters? Uh, restaurant workers are like nurses, stressed and pissed from customers and patients. All right, that was good. I wish I had my sound drop. That was pretty good. That would have given, given you the, the foghorn. 
Uh, guys pretend that uh, five to 10 partners isn't that high, but they would watch them, would they watch them run a train on her all at, the, all at once, uh, they'd get upset, uh, makes sense. Well, I don't know, man, we might be leaning in So what is it worse if she's only had one sexual encounter but it was with 10 guys? Does that make it worse? Oh, it's I guess that makes it worse. If she spreads out the penis over it's a not certain a number amount of time. It's definitely worse if she had multiple at one time. Like, okay. That's definitely worse. I would definitely think But so. she was just so, I saw behind her, she was so crazy in college. Yeah, she's, she's had her enough. fun, and there's no fun left for you. <laughs> hey Christopher, I agree with you, bro. I, I thought about uh, it. You a know lot. what would be cool, Sergio, if you could if you take take this new understanding and rename your podcast Red Pill Podcast. I know everybody's yeah. gonna hate me for the rest of my I life for being perfectly. I don't know about if there's any Red Pill I would, I would think it'd be trade. Probably one right the third day. I would trademark if it was mine. Hey, so we're gonna bring on Miguel. All yeah, right, Miguel, time. take my spot. I gotta pee. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tinkle. I gotta piss. I gotta pee too, but I'll hold it. Let's do this. Oh, wait, I oh, do I need to say here? No, you yeah, you right say there. there. Yeah. Miguel. Miguel, Miguel, I'm gonna tag you in. Go. Wrestling, go. Go. Put your Libre mask on. That's so right. Libre. Rey Mysterio. All right, so this part is a little interesting. Cause um, I don't know this guy. <laughs> you know, but Sergio, you said some shots. Yeah, I said he's a scammer, guys. You said that I, Miguel's oh, a scam artist. I did. I said he's Can a scammer. Can you explain yourself? Yes, I will. Please. I think anybody nice in crypto... Nice to meet you, Oh, yeah, nice to meet you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's good watching you all. Fucking scammer. <laughs> fucking scammer, yeah. Piece of shit. Fucking Hispanic. <laughs> no, I know. Fucking beaner, bro. Fucking wetbacks over here. Uh, but no, nah, dude. I got. I, I just... I'm against crypto big time, man. I'm just super... Overall? Just overall? No, I mean, not overall at all. I think 10% 10, 10 DCAing is completely okay. I think that most people, though, aren't 10% DCAing, and I think that a lot of people who buy these courses usually uh, they don't get told to do 10% DCA well, now if you were every person that was coming in if you're like okay make sure you're maxing your form make sure you're getting um, like your your, 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 your like, yes make sure you're getting your match um, because that's that's the most important and right. then you can do like like your 10% TCA and so that's why I'm really against crypto stuff bro I made a lot of money on crypto. I paid for my studio I bought my first crypto in 2013 Bitcoin at like $560 like okay. I was one of those people that, like I got lucky because I was in it a long time ago then you, almost, then you bought the top then because it topped out at a thousand dollars and then it crashed. oh no at 2013 like I, I show you the receipt it was like 560 was the first one that I bought for it in 2013 okay and like it was like 573 or something like that but the bottom line is though is just that most people aren't like anything it doesn't matter if it's drop shipping if it's um any of these like hustles that are being pushed today you know people are selling courses on all of them but, most but you're, but you're literally trying to sell a course yeah yeah of course yeah yeah because it's all be, because because there's a hierarchy of who gives the best advice there's okay, a, so in, in the, in the there's, a course, there's a course hierarchy yes yes of okay, course because okay. are we not men are we not men is there not in free market is there not a hierarchy no, is there no, not no. who is the best at something and whoever's the best the free market is going to tell us who's the best so I, I just started with my shit but give me fucking time and we'll see who really has the best prescriptions we don't know yet but we will know once i actually get to push myself out i'm not even running ads right now just give it time no that's cool so i mean i haven't run any ads either and stuff i'm in the financial space no, i'm in the red pill of finance yeah so I mean, like I'm red pill adjacent and stuff like that, but yeah, I am in the finance space. I'm not like selling like, you know, uh, like I'm not selling like how to pick up chicks and shit. That's not my lane, right? Yeah. But in terms of crypto, obviously you haven't taken my courses or anything like that. But you know, we've taught like what is it? Almost fourteen thousand people inside the red pill so far since 2020, since August of 2020. And you know, we've had a lot of success. But that's one thing we do teach. One of the big things that we, we talk about is how old are you when you're getting into crypto? I never tell a fucking 50 year old, six year old, even a 45 year old, all in bro, cash out the 401k, sell the fucking house, get a I mean, fucking, get a reverse fucking mortgage. Like just crazy shit. I don't do that. Other guys do that and they're, they're gone. Like this whole crypto winter, we're the last Mohicans. Like go, go, go find a crypto course. They're all gone. I'm literally, literally they're, they're, you, you find, you have like, like, and then there's no shot against Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez comes around at the top of the market. <laughs> Yeah, and then takes dips, money and, then, and, dips. and dips and stuff like that. <laughs> We've been through the, like, I, um, I didn't buy Bitcoin in 2013, but I got in 2016, been around since then, haven't left. This is my only industry. This is the only thing I'm doing. I'm not like pivoting off to something else. Half these grifter guys, what they end up doing is they, they just like, what's hot industry? AI. Okay, I'm in AI now. Or red pill, cool. It's sort of like what Roll is talking about when he's talking about that, like, oh, they're, they're in the red pill now, and then they're gonna switch off to being fucking Muslim or Christian or whatever the fuck the hottest fucking trend is and stuff and mm -hmm. then that's who I am now. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I'm an AI guy now, bro. 
yeah. the AI stocks or like on game stuff. You know, it's it's th- that's what's going that's what's going on right now is that you're you're seeing and we all see it is these dudes that just jump from industry to industry to industry or they just catch the hot part of the trend, make a quick course, get some cash, bug out, and they don't give a fuck. Well, well, I, well, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that if I were you either. Because no. whenever you're, whenever you're partnered up with Fresh and Fit, and you're able to go on every right. three months and push to, and push this to all of their fucking fans, I wouldn't fucking give up either, bro. You're always gonna have people coming in, especially if you have a deal set up with them like you do. Of course, like, and the thing is, it's all a grift at the end of the day. I, I, I'm a grift. I can go and grift and fucking try to sell something. We're all doing different types of grifts, but the problem is in the crypto space. A lot of people like to say, this isn't a grift. This is all, I'm going to teach you stuff that you're not going to lose your back. The thing is, I know a lot of guys who lost their back. And I don't know, like, I'm sure you're smart about this. And you teach guys about cold storage and, like, keeping it safe, not using Androids or, like, using certain uh, apps or phones, using certain things to be safe about. But I have seen tons of people get hacked and lose almost everything. And not even, so so, so I've seen guys lose because they invested wrong wrong and they they got hacked. So because of that, I'm extremely cautious about crypto. And I'd much rather somebody max their 401k, their IRA, and their HSA. This is, well. Personally, I don't like stock. I mean, the stocks are fine and stuff like that. Just or, or at least selling. I, like, yeah. if they want to do more than that, I'll at least teach them how to sell options. Like, I won't ever tell somebody to buy options. We literally have a guy right here that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know Michael's history. I know all about it. But the thing is, is like, I. That, that's the most intelligent thing to do, though. Like, and, and if we look at even Moneyberg, I'm pretty sure that he says that same formula well, as well. Well. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm not going to speak to Moneyberg. I, I would like I to know. say, well, I'm not sure, but I, I, know, but, 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 but I know he yeah. talks about selling options. Like, I, yeah, 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 I, I, know, yeah. I know he talks, so I'm well, just he, saying. Real estate and everything else. Yeah, 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 but I'm just saying, like, even the, the best investors, bro, they're going to say, you know, max out these things, but then selling options is one. If you want to be an investor and do these type of things, usually the safest thing is the selling the options. Well, well, I'm in a new industry. Yeah. This thing is like, what, 2009? Yeah. Right. It's really new. And even back, I mean, what was it? 2017, we're $640 billion. 2021, we're... 3.4 trillion yeah and right now like we're barely above a trillion right now we're heading towards 10 trillion by the end of the decade and stuff it's a small industry fucking gold's like a hundred trillion dollars yeah yeah so we're even even at the peak of the fucking market will be a tenth of gold yeah right and i, I know gold's like five thousand fucking years old shout out to rock yeah <laughs> i but, actually sell gold i'm very big on gold i'm very big on about 10 percent saying even on gold as an right. insurance I mean, I fell for the grift too a long time ago, man. We all fell for like a ten percent insurance. There's nothing wrong with the ten percent insurance. Well, no, there's nothing wrong is like having like some gold and stuff like that. I mean, but, like but, I but, sell, so I actually have a jewelry store and I get gold at cost. I get gold jewelry at cost, yeah. okay. And most people came here and I can still sell for double if yeah, I want. And I, I, I buy Rolexes so, from the eighties and stuff, and I get them instantly in profit too. But like, it's so. Look, I mean, like, I mean, we we look. You're right. Every industry has grifters. It's true. It's just finding. It's just finding where where the, the hierarchy, right? Who is the top of the hierarchy and stuff? Where where's some of the top of the hierarchy? Are you at the top of the hierarchy though, because of your skill, or because you go on a show that has no, a million and a half skills? I mean, I didn't start. I did not start even doing like even a YouTube channel until I had a million dollars in crypto. Like, cause I felt like a fucking fraud. I like I I took my fucking landscape money because I came from blue. I was a blue collar worker, Mexican dude, first generation. Took my money, invested it in stocks originally then took it from there put it into crypto grew it to a million dollars then from there started my youtube channel then from there started decided to make a fucking course Mm -hmm. like i didn't like i still it was like four years in before i even decided to even like teach anybody about crypto because i felt like a fucking fraud like how could i teach anybody about crypto if i haven't made any fucking money yeah right it makes sense yeah no no and and i'm not getting mad at you or nothing like that but it's just like you're right this this whole grifter mentality is it's it's pretty fucking bad but like most of these guys are just jumping i mean half the guy like the other thing too i mean we talk i talk to fresh and good all the time this waller i mean justin everyone talks about this is that like there's these gang of dudes and not not just in dubai but all over the world they're 19 years old 21 years old no fucking experience at all talking to you about how to make all these millions of dollars or like they've had one girlfriend in their whole fucking life and they're (laughs) telling you like this is how your dick should go into her like like craziness shit right like it, I, and obviously, it's not some reverse ageism bullshit, but there is this whole thing where, like, if you're going to be talking about money, at least, you do need some, like, some time, right? I mean, obviously, there's some dudes that got really lucky with a crypto pump and stuff like that. I know tons of these dudes that made, like, $40 million, made $10 million off of, off of a pump and dump from just rugging their community. We don't do that shit. I've never made a crypto coin. I've only taught education. I've given, I've been like, hey, this is what I'm doing. But I, you know, you got to do it at the end of the day. This is why even in the beginning of my show. Have y'all ever rugged? No. Okay. Well, rug what? Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know. That's what I'm well, I, same know. thing. Same thing. I, I only knew about you just because, like, I just um, I saw a bunch yeah, of yeah, my one video talking. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was like, yeah. and then people started sending me, "Yo, this guy's like, this guy's a dickhead." This, 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 this guy, <laughs> this guy, and then this guy like submitted it about me. So there you go. Thank you, Sir Tang. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, um, so I didn't even know what I ex- to expect when I came on here, like with you and stuff, like, because I, I thought I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna be a 
a fucking like oh this guy fucking really hates me. For Listen, some it's it's a function of so like for instance, uh, which religion is good, right? So if we were to say. Uh, if you have somebody who would say, well, I, I like Islam or I like Judaism or I like uh, Jews, Buddhism yeah. or whatever, if you were to say that, uh, and then I would say, well, look at all the great things that have happened in this society because of Judaism, this society because of Islam, this side because of Buddhism, and this side because of Judaism or Christianity. If I were to say that, then you would have Richard Dawkins come around and he would say, no, all of you are criminals mm -hmm. for allowing your children to learn about God. Yeah. Your children right. should have the choice to, like, you know Richard Dawkins believes this, yeah. right? In the God Delusion, yeah. he's a, he basically states that taking your children to church is child abuse. Yeah. So for yeah. him, but the, the thing is, because in that case, he's like, well, there is no evidence to support this. And when it comes to uh, investing, whatever it is investing, yeah. and this is also goes back to flipping houses, stuff like that, even investing, there are downturns in the market yep, so which yeah. then makes there, there be a, not quite like religion but a randomness aspect to mm -hmm. it and the randomness aspect then uh, to some people negates anyone teaching any course right. on this whatsoever but but, but 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 we can, uh, can can you not agree with me on this that whenever the market does pull back when interest rates do rise when they right. do do certain things there are certain things that fail first there are certain things that are going to get pumped out first okay that's why crypto lost it really bad right. when we're the first, interest rates went down, up first down but first up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, yeah 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 but so the houses are way more safe because we know that's probably going to be one of the last things if it does go down so like it's only like the only reason why i'm against it like this is because like i said it's going to be one of the first ones yeah. to go down yeah. it's gonna and so i don't want somebody to get screwed i would totally push somebody into buying property and doing what, what like what myron does because it's old because there's a track record to it that's the thing is when i'm in a new industry where we're, we're making the track record right now but, making, the, but, but so there's why, risk though there's high risk with that well, of course it is but where high where, risk gives high rewards anyway, so my, my point is how is he a grifter now if he explains that there's he's just high teaching risk. high risk no yeah no no you're just saying then, I, I mean then, I can also teach people to go trade options and say and, and say hey yeah. buy this option and there's a 50 50 chance you know of it going up or down it's whatever because you have no, to sorry. pay for the options yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so never explain to my people. audience like what you used yeah, to do yeah what do you what, what do you used to do yeah <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So, so from from 2013 to tw actually still do it now I think I'm, I'm up uh, I want to say I'm up like 26 27 percent this year it's uh it's it's from I sell put spreads mainly but I sell options so basically you don't wheel huh. You don't wheel? What do you mean wheel? Use the wheel strategy where you sell and then once it gets. Oh, you're talking about the wheel, the, the wheel of, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, what's her name? I can't remember. I mean, that's just Liz what everybody, if, you, if you go on Reddit, it's just all everybody does. Everybody's all using the wheel strategy when you're yeah. selling options. Like no, I sell, I sell put spreads uh, just because. <laughs> you gotta be aware when all of Reddit's on one train, yeah, though. For sure. Uh, <laughs> well, it's yeah, just yeah. about talking about what's the safest. And like, if you really there, look at no safe, general there's consensus, no there's no safe, there, safe. there is no safest. For me, well, course, I sell more options when the VIX is high and I sell fewer options when the VIX is low. That's pretty much it. And I and I use SPX because I got a 1256 uh, tax break. Uh, I, I pay long term, 60% long term capital gains. And uh, I have a um, a smaller bid ask spread than I would for crypto. So that's why I sell, uh, I sell put spreads right. okay. in, uh, in SPX. That's mainly what I do for it. I have five accounts that I trade for. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing SPX. Everybody's yeah. doing dailies and shit. Yeah. See, so yeah. here's the thing is like, yeah, I don't okay, do dailies. So I do like, for instance, you, can, you can make the case that like there was the, I don't know if you probably too young to remember this, but the dot com bubble, like yeah. when all the, the internet companies were like really pumped up and then yeah. they all took a Crazy shit right around what, 2001, 2002, mm -hmm. 2001. Like that. Yeah. No. And then they blew out. That would be like me saying, oh, don't ever get in this internet thing anymore. It's just fucking, it's a yeah. waste of your time and waste of your money. It's like, right. well, no, it's not. It's just, it's like, just it's getting like, upset. Yeah, I know with Web3, I know with different things coming, it's going to become a big deal. It's just like, like, anybody that would have bought if you told everybody to buy a few months ago i wouldn't talk shit about that because obviously great call like it like you like if you called the bottom you called we, the bottom we, we did yeah yeah so so good job if you called the bottom it's just a matter of we don't know what interest rates are going to do if i don't know what the fed they're chairman going is going to do i'm not going to guess what he's going to do they're going up 50 more basis points and then in some middle of next year he's going to start taking it down 100 basis points off of what jerome powell just said yeah but he but something could happen if the fucking economy blows up they'll fucking nuke it down to zero and that and that's why that's why i would which is good overall for i mean we, for crypto and where is market. george gammon we'll george gammon yeah yeah right the, i love he wouldn't george, even fit on the table bro yeah. he's like so good honestly about. george is one of my biggest inspirations like i watch all no, of his george is a big dude yeah, yeah. And I, you know i just want to also point out that people are like what the fuck is this guy why is it one on one because <laughs> miguel's my partner <laughs> miguel. i mean that in a heterosexual man Mike is also my what is, what is, I also mean that Robert, how, sexual, Tell me the truth How you, how you've been married 27 years on a date like, Yes yeah, it's like, but, uh, I, I have hetero, I have heterosexual life right? partners My favorite My favorite is uh, yes. uh, Justin Waller He goes Dude you look great All homo <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> no, like we, I, dude, in Texas, that's uh, how it is, bro. We always say no. Uh, I'm not gonna say no homo, big homo, buddy. Big homo. Big homo. Big homo. Yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm, homo. Homo. I'm yes. gay for you. No, no, it's, uh, but I, I wanted to point out the fact that we bring up like people like we've had uh, Robert Kiyosaki was with us uh, just two or uh, three weeks ago. Um, and uh, then we had Ken McElroy, who's also like really I mean, right. guys. This, if he's not a billionaire, oh, that was he's just show. this yeah. close to being a billionaire. How, but, uh, how real old estate. Thirty-two. Oh, they're almost same age. Jesus so, Christ! One on so, one. My and God. then when I when he drags me to like PulseCon or Pulse like kid. his events, then I I can't even. I'm like floored by how many people there know me from my podcast, from from Actus Vegas, from my my stuff. And so there's a lot of crossover. So when when people like say, well, how come you have? How come you do stuff with? Uh, with Miguel, it must be because you've got affiliate marketing going and it's you got a, you got some sort of shield that you're doing. I was like, no, man, I work with him like for a lot of other things yeah. too. But like, yes, will I work on you with that? Sure. sure. But there's also crossover between the the crypto communities, which by the way, are desperately need like red the pill and awareness. Because they're being taken advantage of. Yes. It's because, and yeah, I, I agree with you on that. There's yes. a lot of crypto dorks that well, need help. There's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of guys and these, who get And these rolled. crypto chicks are fucking dangerous, dude. <laughs> beware, no, yo. So be, she, of, she knows crypto and she's a chick, beware. So there's a lot of, there's a crossover Shout out to Kennedy Summers, Dr. Kennedy Summers. Beware. And so, we have that. We've got that in common. We've got that's the money side of things. Yeah. You know, like George Gannon, Kiyosaki, uh, even Jason Hart. Shout out to Jason, Jason Hart. Yeah. Um, and then you know, then we have the fitness side. You know, we work with uh, with O'Neill oh, and, and other people uh, as far as the fitness is concerned. So it's like just because we have somebody on here that we're talking about, like, yeah, when are they going to talk about red pill stuff? Well, we do if there's crossover. So when you see Miguel with me, and it's like now you're gonna like you know throw rocks at Miguel, you're throwing rocks at me too. Oh yeah, so I know. Like, when I when I yeah. when I see that, it's like I I'm, I'm not sure that a lot of guys really know what the hell they're talking about. So that, I'm gonna we gotta we gotta kill the stream here in just a second, but um, I I want to point out that uh, one of my biggest problems with the quote unquote red pill right now or what it's become is that that's why I kept pressing you and asking you about like well who are we talking about? What are we talking about? What podcast? What individual? What show? What? When was this? Who were they? You know, who are they talking about? Um, so when I hear people say, "Oh, it's those red pill guys," they always say X, right? But right. yet they'll use that sweeping generalization and not be able to tell me who they're mentioning. And yet they'll say those red pill guys. All they do is use sweeping generalizations. Oh, right? it's, all, it's all Myron for me, bro. Yeah, all my beef is with say, Myron. I, I said exactly. Honestly. You have beef with Myron. I said the same. Yeah, thing. all my beef is with Myron. I disagree with him on most things by but see, far. But see, let me let me explain something to you. Myron Gaines and Fresh and Walt, they are not the the beginning and the end of the red pill, nor am I, by the way. Yeah. They they're it's a it's a collective it's a evolution. And so that's what well see, that's the problem that throws people off is that the red pill is decentralized. Right. It's like anonymous, right? There is no there's no leader of the red pill. There is no you know, grand poobah or what it, they call me the godfather, thank you. But you know what? When I'm gone there'll be another person. Hell, Kevin Samuels was called the godfather for a long time. Yes, he was, right? yeah. Um, so when um, there, there's no like face to the to the red pill, there's no face. Even if people want to make you know Andrew Tate the face of the red pill because he was on Tucker Carlson, I he, you know he's still coming out saying those red pill dorks. I don't want to have anything to do with them anymore. Right. Well, remember what I was saying. Well, it's going to happen in the next you know five years with the manager. That's a pretty good. That's the canary in the coal mine right there. Um, but when I press these guys and I say, who are you talking about? Well, I did this with Destiny when yep. we were on there on Fresh Fresh and Fit. I'm saying. Who? Who are you talking about? Because yeah. most of them think of the red pill as this big enigmatic thing. You guys all agree to this, and you guys are all incels. Now, apart, apparently, red pill is, is like yeah. synonymous with incel. Yeah. Alpha, well, well, it's synonymous with fresh and fit and their audience. Well, alpha, That's what alpha traits to Destiny meant narcissism, Machia Machiavellianism, yeah. Yeah. And, anti and, uh, and sociopathy. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know a single person in this space like prescribing you sociopathy mm -hmm. no one the idea that that's an alpha trait and he goes no what you need to do is have a bunch of female friends to go to these places and then you and then use your status with it i'm like no dude those are the alpha traits mm -hmm. you're saying like the, the problem is with, the problem yeah, with him is that he's already gone on lex freeman and tom billu's uh a podcast and he he's it's those guys and he's made a, a, a description of all red pill guys being in this one place and then when he he goes against me, it's very frustrating for him because it's like, no, you're right. You're not they're, like them. Yeah, but no, it's not that yeah. I'm not like them. Is I agree. There's no way if a guy's in there like, you know, 
kill all women or some crazy shit like that. We agree that's misogynist. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. You shouldn't say shit like that, right? We agree that some of these people are racist. That's not the point what we're trying to make. It's like no one at the top of the funnel is prescribed. Well, maybe there are. I mean, maybe the dude in Brazil is. But like no one at the top of the funnel is prescribing those things. And so when he talks to reasonable people who are like, hey, the, the, the 15 year olds in our YouTube live chats, they don't represent us. And my God, like if you were to look at the, you know, on Rumble, when they go live on Rumble and they turn YouTube off and everyone's on there, that stream is horrible. I've like, never seen it. I need to take it out. It's crazy the shit that they say on the live stream. I need to check it out. Also, if, yeah, if, say hi to Whitler. If, if all you ever knew what, about the Red Pill was what you got off of like the After Hour show, because there's other shows right. on Fresh and Fifth and the After Hour show, if all you ever got out of the Red Pill, if that was your definition of the Red Pill, you are com you're incomplete. I agree. Okay? If all you ever were to look at was, say, like Kevin Samuel stuff, but good as it is, it would still be incomplete. If all you ever did was read my five books and didn't do anything else, it would still be incomplete. Mm -hmm. So when people have, want to make a grift out of criticizing the red pill, usually when you press them and say, hey, look, uh, who are you talking about? They won't be able to tell you anyone. Or maybe fresh and fit they would. Like Destiny even said that. I'm like, okay, who else? Because if you're going to say it's all those red pill guys, well, who? Uh, what other red pill guys do you have any fucking working knowledge of? And they got fucking nothing yeah. because it's it's better for them to go throw out like you know hand grenades about like those red pill guys and straw man everything that they know nothing about and when you press them on it they go, they absolutely do not know anything about the red pill or they don't know anything about the history of it I've been doing this for twenty fucking years and I still got to go see like you know destiny on what uh, Tom Belu or, or or fucking Lex Friedman or, or Chris right. Williamson right as some sort of you know leading authority on the manosphere and it's like you're talking to a guy to a kid who's been associated with this for the last maybe 18 months if that mm -hmm. yeah. so that tells me not only about that person but also the person who's interviewing them as well so I have to sort of take that with a grain of salt because I've been doing this a lot longer than anybody else has but when I'm seeing people say well the red pill is this the red pill is that I struggle with saying, well, what is the red pill roller? I will give you, I will sit here and yammer on and monologue for a very long fucking time because it's not a bumper sticker. It's not an elevator pitch. It yeah. is a fucking college course is what it is. It's red pill 101, red pill 102, red pill, four, you know, and then you got the primer and you got to take the fucking doctoral thesis at the end of it because that's how, how in depth and how how you know controversial it ends up being yeah. because if you don't have that depth of experience and I will tell this to anybody who wants to come into this space including yourself mm -hmm. anybody who wants to come into this space you better take the fucking college course before you start your before you start your show yeah. I'll try to catch up on y'all's well, evolutionary when, psychology when people, books when people come to me and they say well how come you have a problem with Pearl she didn't take the fucking course yeah she didn't read the books okay? yeah Myron Gaines took the course. Yeah. Okay. So that's why Myron is actually a pretty good representative. I I think of the. Yeah, record. I agree. But he when is. When anybody yeah. new comes into the space, I go, okay, what is this guy talking about? Does he have any like knowledge of this? Does he care about knowing it? We, you mentioned Torsha a little while ago. One of the reasons why I worked with Torsha and I liked her is because she took the time to go back through my backlog, read all my books, went through all the backlog of all my old blogs, and made like you know content based on that. That's somebody. Who wants to be a, you want a red pill woman? That's the one I would point you to right oh, yeah. now, is because she knows the shit. Hmm. I would never do say the same thing about Pearl because she's just an enter entertainer who ha will go and try to ask other people what should they talk about today, right? Yeah. And then doesn't know how to defend a point. If you don't know how to de defend the point, then I know you're not about the. Red and pill. I don't read just the Evo psych books. I also read all the Stefan Speaks books. I'm trying to just help women well, see, even, in even, general. So even Evo, so. even Evo psych, that's one aspect of the. Pills. Yeah, There's anthropology, sociology, yeah. neuro, I mean, brain fucking. I, I try to keep list of everything that, that you talk about, bro. Yeah. Like I literally try Evil, to walk. I, evolutionary biology, in some in some respects, I think is almost more important than evolutionary psychology to yeah. some subjects that we're talking. And having a working knowledge of that, I can't expect. Yeah, two but, 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 the, but the issue with out. the evolutionary biology stuff yeah. specifically, it mm. is it is so against not against, but it's it's so antithetical to what some. Christians and Muslims and Jews believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, evolution, the evolutionary psychology, you can actually kind of get away with it, but the evolutionary biology is so tied into natural selection so that it makes it very difficult for you to be like, and I, it says in the Genesis, go forth and multiply. And it's like, well, we used to be related to an, an we have a common ancestor with monkeys. 
And they're like, what? That doesn't make, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So like, rather than read that, what I'm gonna say instead is, why can't we get back to traditional values? Well, no, no, wait, what, we were talking about evolutionary biology a second yeah. ago. No, I want traditional values. I'm like, well, the traditional values would be like the Serengeti 70,000 years ago. <laughs> that would be the traditional values. Yeah. When we saw people we didn't recognize, we snuck in there in the middle of the night and murdered them and then and stole, their, and then stole <laughs> their lives. That's actually the traditional yeah. values if you want to know what those are. Mm -hmm. That's before there was a written word. We're still in an ice age back then. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think I think that's one of the issues is that like, uh, oh, we're getting back to the uh, Super Chats? Yeah, we got yeah. 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 Super All chat. right, then, then, okay. then, then uh, play us out, uh, Piano Cat. All right, so, <laughs> uh, by the way, Brad, we type like this. I think it's supposed to be for you, Mike. They call you Brad. I don't get it. By the way, Brad, we type like this because limited characters or letters on these super chats. Kevin Samuel spoke on this a lot. Stay away from nurses, restaurant workers, and other masculine jobs. They don't bring peace. They actually are good servers, so they're good at serving people. Yeah. I, like my, my girlfriends what have always been the most serving women that want to cook and do all types of shit for me. So peace, I definitely disagree with that. Chaotic sexual energy. Right. All right. Uh, Mr. World, 999, PPP, Mr. World, let's fucking go, Miguelito, <laughs> we look forward to having you on Purple Pill Podcast, put us on some financial game. There we go. Yeah, come and to Dallas, you bro, you're welcome anytime, man, I would love to have All right. you on. And then All one right. more. We can make peace, guys, All right. we can make peace. One more. Peace uh, in our time. Guys, uh, it's not in there. But, uh, Sergio, did you do your push-ups today? <laughs> Should we have them Mike, right don't here? fucking call. No, I did not do them today. <laughs> Fuck. I will do them later. We got a hotel with a we fucking We got to get room, that on video. I know. Why did it happen? Powerhouse gym, baby. Next time you come out, we're going to take you to Powerhouse. No, for sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. All right. That's a wrap. That's us. Thank you for watching. Uh, also, uh, at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be on Access Vegas right on this channel that you're watching right now uh, and also on Mike's channel and you're probably already watching it on Access Vegas as well. So be sure to tune in. Uh, we'll be on with the ladies. Uh, how many we got? The Sun 10? Uh, no, eight, we're... Ten, it's eight. eight so because, because there's three dudes. Uh -huh. I have nine girls scheduled, but probably... I mean, I'm, I always expect... Exactly. The, guys, if you ever want to know the secret, you book ten to get six. That's yes. always what it is. Yes. You end up with nine or eight, yeah. but you book ten to get six. By the way, that's also the secret of getting girls not to flake. Yes, also. You, you, you backlog yeah, for sure. For sure. Spinning for, 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 for bikini, load your dates. You won't for bikini, your for bikini competition, you want to get you need sixty to get forty. That's how it works for that. Yeah, right. But for the maximum party, you need hundred to get eighty. That's mm -hmm. it. And for Bulzarians uh, parties, you need hundred to get hundred. Uh, <laughs> they ain't missing that there opportunity. Trade secrets from Las Vegas, uh, <laughs> free, free, free of charge on, yeah. on, on the show. Anyways, uh, we will see you guys at eight p.m. Pacific, eleven p.m. Eastern. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks a lot. Dude, everybody thank you hands. so much. Everybody's bro. cool with everybody. Yeah. There we yes, go. Yes, we are. All right. Thank y'all guys Thanks. so we'll much. Thanks. We'll see you guys man. in a little while.